H-A-U-B. If you're wondering, Keith Horb is the name of our commentator from Auckland today. And it's Dantelar, $2.60. Let's take you to the track, and you can see the New Zealand prices being scrolled through underneath if you want a good comparison. Keith Hobb, it is, calling the first from Auckland, or race one it is here. And it's the Group 1 McDonough Railway Handicap. They're all but ready with drawn walked in. Racing in the McDonough Railway. Good start and kicking up Sambo from that one gate. Can cape a lad going with it. Bo Alexander's working up, then followed by withdrawn on the inside, streaking round Dantelar going with it. Buster Brookfield and then followed by Fritz's charging round as well. Shincock Hill's got shuffled back a little now, then Beryl's trapped back and then followed Tarius. Into the straight they come. 400 out. Dantelar looms up the Sambo and Shincock Hills is out after the two. Angling off the rail is Bo Alexander and about three back behind them. Then is Bainana down the straight. Dantelar the Aussies in front. Bo Alexander trying to come through an inch gap. Going to switching out on the outside and Sambo are after these. But Dantelar and Oliver have a handy break. They've got the railway. One look at Vainana rattle home. But Dantelar in front going to the post. Coming out at late. Bo Alexander. But Dantelar has beaten Bo Alexander. Vainana a game run third. Scutarius was next then followed by Sambo. And next behind them then were withdrawn alongside of it Trans-Siberia. And then followed Kincapel Ladd and well back with Shincock Hills, Buster Brookfield, Bear All and Fritz was one of the last home. She had paid well in New Zealand down to last 6.50 and 2.45 there, but much shorter in Australia. Damien Oliver, yet another Group 1 winner. The trifecta, $281. So a lot of money for that horse late. As you can see, it was much shorter than it was in New Zealand. The two Aussie jockeys from there. Chevy at $17, $5.40 for Danny Vegas. And you'll see it's priced. Magic's paying $12 in New Zealand, around $3 on Tote New South Wales. Emeralds now come into $8.80 on the New South Wales TAB Queensland figures you case from New Zealand with a very difficult Chevy. It's paying $50 in New Zealand. Danny Vegas at $4.80 in New Zealand. Crimson's a $7 chance in New Zealand, so that's a good form line. Uh, Magic is about to come through. Emerald at $7.30 in New Zealand. And the Blue Star Cup. And one of the first away, Danny Vegas, from that inside gate. Chase Alita goes with a chance. Bow's handy. Racing up Jimmy Neat on the outside. Now the message streaking around. Paces on early all right. Then followed between horses. Have it back. Now going around Emerald and Chevy. It's worked round wide on the outside. A fight for the lead. And then back about sixth on the inside. Chance Bow. Denham just ahead in the cup. And Irish chance is last. At the 800 metres now. The message joined by Denham on the outside. A length and a half. Then Manchu Worry. Warrior then followed Jimmy. Jimmy Neat is the next horse, then Emerald is next as they come towards the corner. Mull Queen's getting handier, then followed by Chase Alita. Magic is the next one as they pack up a little on the turn. Shans Bow on the rail, on the turn. Shans Bow on the rails, have it back, he's there. Out wider, My Gallion as they come round the turn. Crimson's taking off, and Danny Vegas and Irish Chance to the very outside. Around the turn they come, heading for home in the cup. Denham's taken the lead, the message on the inside. Here are the challenges, Manchu Warrior. Jimmy Neat will chase a leader along the inside, and Mull Queen strides down the outside. Outside. Coming after them, Danny Vegas late across the track. Mal Queen's got the lead now. Chase a leader and on the inside, Chance Bow. His Irish Chance is out after them as well. Irish Chance dash to the lead in the closing stages. Chance Bow fighting back on the inside. Irish Chance and Noel Harris win the cup. Second at the line was Chance Bow. Mal Queen was third. They were followed home behind these now. Danny Vegas behind it, Emerald. Then followed back behind them were Jimmy Neat, Centro, View All American have it back. Crimson wasn't in it. Back also North Lady, my galleon was back as well. Of Empire Rose fame and also Tycoon Lil Ta. Lil Ta. For Ali Bosson, the Boom Kiwi Apprentice on board. Damien Oliver's on board, Egoli Lass, number seven. Six dollars thirty. Remember this horse, Gold City? It chased home octagonal, narrowly missing out in the Australian Cup, that memorable race at Flemington. Four thirty for Palia, Noel Harris, who had a Group 1 win yesterday with the son of Sir Tristram. Batavian's paying seven dollars in New Zealand. Chris Munts rides Sea Squill, a $14 chance. Wahat Racing in the JRA, and one of the first out is Arleti Gold City bounced out as well. Waitahuru is going with them, so too with Goldie Lass out wider on the track. Greenstone Charm, they're five and six wide in search of the lead, and the pace on Goldie Lass making it now from Arleti the inside. Out wider, Greenstone Charm behind them. Lorado checking off heels, then followed all in fun, and followed Batavian on the inside, his last. Around the corner they come, 500 metres to go, and Waitahuru led them from Gypsy Soul. Sea Squirrels coming into it, so too now. Palaira as they come 
around the turn. Gold City coming out wide into the straight. White Tahirua from Gypsy Soul throws down the gauntlet now. Two back behind them. See Squill as they sprint for home. Gypsy Soul in front runs from Arletti late. Del Coronado along the rails coming home and Greenstone Charms coming into it. And here's Palua. Del Coronado kick right through on the inside. He's going to beat them all. Greenstone Charms battling him. Look at all in front. Come after Del Coronado. Del Coronado with his nose in front and he's got there. Great day for the president. Second was all in fun, then followed behind them. Greenstone Charm, Parlaya was next, then followed home by Gypsy Soul. Next behind them were Arletti, Bartavian the next one, and well back behind them as they went across the line. Cool rates 100, good value at $7.60. Juggler, 95, and good value at 5.20. Major victory, 93. Monet's Cove, nine's interest, 34. 33 as I speak. Monet's Cove, 20. City Hall, 15. 18 Harvey Ladd, the North 20, 42, Navet 11, Sahara Z 24, Chris 10, $21 gold tooth Maloof. The field gates open and they're off and running and never late was slow to move at the start not so city hall from an outside barrier crystal pistol began quickly and at the end of the hundred is crystal pistol in front of city hall Monet's cave going up quickly Harvey Ladd interest to the 900 metres mark they run and near the inside Crystal Pistol just in front of Monet's Cove Roulette's out three deep Harvey Lads on the fence fourth city then low mass Nivet midfield on the inside of Forgotten Hero Jugglers worse than midfield on the inside of Waterford Road then came the north and never late Sahara Zed's a long way back with Regal Rebel Gold Tooth Maloof and Jeans Interest in the straight to the 400 metres mark Crystal Pistol led Monet's Cove City Hall about to get into the clear Roulette on the outside followed by Harvey Lad further back the field blue pill and major victory at the 250 meters mark and the leader Monet's Cove City Hall's trying hard blue pill Harvey Ladd and major victory but blue pill in the middle got to the lead never it's going to get out late and rattle home but blue pill got to the lead close to home blue pill Blue Pill has won from either Nevitt in the fast finishing juggler. Then Harvey Ladd, or oh, Blue Pill's broken down, going over the line. Major victory behind them from Forgotten Hero. Then Gold Tooth, Maloof, City Hall, Monet's Cove, never late. And Blue Pill, the winner, has broken down in a sensational barrel bowl. Oh, unbelievable. The horse has put up a burn performance, Blue Pill. 22 alley he had. He started from the extreme outside. He started from Ashmore Road. And, a, and, and in a, a great field of um, and Mick Flanagan, the trainer. I'll get back to confirm these numbers first. Gee, that's distressing. Damn it. A horse puts up a performance like that and then to break down on 50 metres after the line. Ain't the winner blue pill. It's a sweet victory. Ain't the winner blue pill. It's a sweet victories in the history of the Australian turf. And, uh, OK, Gold Coast... Sad race. Blue Pill, 875, 325, Juggler, 225, Nevet. Plenty of observers seem to think stewards were right in giving the railway handicap to Balanax Gunner. It was by no means unanimous. Therefore, connections of the straight strike horse had something to prove when he fronted up at Trentham 22 days later for the Group 1 Telegraph handicap run over the lightning fast, dog leg shaped 1200 metre track. Hero and Samboa go head to head. Shinnecock Hills is now the trader to Buster Brookfield. Bow Alexander's looking to get into the clear as they turn and go for home. Behind these, Barnov Zoo and Trans Siberia. Hero and Samboa a little between them. Shinnecock Hills looking for the passage through and Buster Brookfield's jogging up to them. And Bow Alexander's coming with them as well. They've drawn away from Trina. Samboa, Buster Brookfield wide around as Bow Alexander. He's coming to warm up now. Buster Brookfield, Bow Alexander, and Lance O'Sullivan gets to the green money first for a while, and is he happy to? The handicapper was reasonably kind to Bow Alexander, lifting him just 1.5 kilos after he gained the railway in the stewards' room. At Trentham, however, as Del Coronado landed the JRA Classic at Ellerslie, a smallish and physically unimposing filly called Savannah Success bravely took the Group 2 Royal Stakes for three-year-old fillies. The Royal is the traditional lead-up for the Group 1 New Zealand Oaks at Trenton, but this season the Zabil filly Nahayan took a very non-traditional route via the New Zealand Derby. Remember the black filly who ran right off the track in So Casual's Derby? 
Well, here she is back against her own sex of Trentham and a short price favourite. And here's Soap Opera. Pretty wickets after at the outside. And then the gaps come in here for Savannah Success. And the Hayen right against the inside. Wider out straight victory. And Dancing Days right to the outside. Savannah Success in front. Savannah Success running on from Dan Hay on the inside. And then Pretty Wicked. Two group ones on the day for Lance Sullivan. And this great filly Savannah Success. Now that's a racehorse. While Nahayan, that was the third successive win for Savannah Success and stamped her clearly as the best filly in New Zealand. Remember how impressive Irish Chance looked when he stormed down the centre of the track to win the Auckland Cup? Despite a lift in the handicaps, the Sir Tristram five-year-old still looked to be the class commodity in an otherwise below-par edition of the $300,000 Group 1 Wellington Cup. McGeera getting the inside run, the outside Miss Bailey, Emeralds after them and Billy is coming home with his run and deep around Ed's putting in and Beachwood Road's getting right up and behind these with random thoughts. Emerald now on the inside, Miss Bailey hasn't given it away, and then Beachwood Road and Random Thoughts, Emeralds in front, fighting hard on the inside, the bolt and Miss Bailey's coming again, Miss Bailey and Leanna she was going to cause the boil over of the century. For 399 of the last 400 metres, Emerald was going to run down Miss Bailey, but the long shot had her nose in front when it counted. Miss Bailey was the horror result of the Group 1 season on either side of the Tasman arriving at odds of 143 to 1 on the New Zealand TAB. Amazingly, Mile at Trenton is one of two Group 1 races run under handicap conditions at 1,600 metres in New Zealand each season. Last year, the race saw the emergence of a triple Group 1 winner named Fair Form. In 1999, her counterpart is an exciting young lover from the Noel Eel State. His name? Surface. Then Centre Crest getting into the clear and surface. He's starting to warm up and fatal and bluebird the murder right down the outside. Surface race to the front here. Surface now. He's a link clear on Centre Crest. Amy J. Fatal and bluebird the word flying at the finish. Oh, but it's all the class act and Noel Harris on surface. They win the Thornton outstanding effort. While the New Zealand press exciting a hundred. General Nadim 95, Al Mansour 90, and Pleasure Giver 83. 2, 1, 3, and 6 are the ratings. 330 for number 1, General Nadim. 2, Chief De Beers 450, Al Mansour 480. 13, Blazing Steel. 35, Sovereign State. 13, Pleasure Giver 47. My Halo Broke 43. 10, Spend 35, Huge Jet 80. For his call of one of the best sprint racers ever seen on the Gold Coast. Thanks, Alan. On Spring Fountain, who's in a very, very. Off and racing now, My Halo broke near the inside, was one of the first to go. Indy Man Chief De Beers began quickly, General Nadim and Huge Jet mustering speed. Al Mansour's just behind them a little bit wide early, followed by Spender, then came Grey and Gold. Fountain, General Nadim on the inside at El Mansour at the 500 together. Chief De Beers has got the drop on them, he's third on the inside of Sovereign State, then came Huge Jet. Spender the outside from Indy Man, Grey and Gold and Blazing Steel. General Nadim first for home, 300 out, El Mansour's under the whip and Chief De Beers got into the clear. Spend on the outside is starting to run home strongly. General the Demon front at the 200. Chief De Beers in second spot followed by Spend and Huge Jet but it's all General the Demon with 100 metres left to go. Chief De Beers, Spend and Pleasure Giver next but it's the General. He's back on his pedestal today. General the Demon, he won the money. Second home, Spend a lip away. Pleasure Giver third. Then Aramathia. Aramathia, what a run him. Behind them, Blazing Steel. My halo broke Chief to be as followed by huge jet the next time triplo sovereign state further back gray and gold el mansour compounded in the straight followed by spring fountain and last time was indy man the general is back meters to go on general nadam and jimmy burns got a big grip on him as they straighten up general nadam moved away a length and a half in front of chief de beers is into the clear old man has gone he's under pressure coming to the outside spenders running on the generals in front now he goes for the shillabi on him he booted away he's two lengths clear of chief de beers spenders up to third it's the general in front he's back today this is what we've been waiting in waiting for him to do and general nadam raced away on the run to the line look at jimmy burns stand in the irons as they hit the line and general nadam has beaten spend it's a photo for third who has run a course record in winning the race and how do you feel now <laughs>
I can't talk. No, I can understand um, it, Ron. You've been under great pressure with this horse. It has it. Well, you have doubts. And if he'd turn into a ball, well, we, he would have stopped. But now, take it. Your training career yeah, so far? As a relief, yeah, because, you know, I took him on. Somebody comes and said, you want the best sprint in the land? You say, no, I don't. Yeah. You know, and I took the horse on, and I thought I'd be just, just swimming a race win, and I had a lot of problems, you know. Yeah. A lot of work, you know, and... Uh, for a place, 11 spend at $2.60, and Pleasure Giver, three forty. As you went past the post, did the stewards say anything about that? No, I was expecting them to, but uh, they kind of let me go today, uh, yesterday, so I was, I was kind of glad it kept $500 in my pocket. <laughs> now, you're out in front, and you were highballing it along, and you've broken the track record. Mm. Did you know you were going that quick? Oh, he was always doing it quite well. Um, as I said earlier, I was pretty concerned when our man saw come up on his outside. He, he pretty much will fight him up that little bit, and uh, you know it, he was lovely and relaxed prior to that. So you know, all the, all the way up until the 700, I was uh, um, just coasting, doing 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 it quite well. And yeah. uh, as soon as I asked, give him, give him a squeeze today, uh, yesterday I should say. He uh, smartened up, so it was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Jim, the horse was bled. Obviously, there's something wrong with Elman. So ten. The ratings, though, have gone with number one, Testarossa, 100. Ten, Shalt Not, 88. Eleven, Sally Magic, 85. And Territorial with the Wide Gate, 83. So the ratings are one, ten, oh, Wales, and 150, Super Tab. No change there. 14, Territorial, 17, Plushenko. Grand Express, 26. Shalt Not, 590. Sally Magic, 12. Lavina Bay, 63. Bossy... Mr. Rossa will start one of the short price favourites in Magic Million history at odds on. Now sh they're set, they're racing now. Testa Rossa came out in about the middle of the field. Iron Ore on the inside, the first to go, and Henning and Sally Magic began in a big hurry. Grand Express is going fast, and Testa Rossa's improved quickly. He's racing 53 deep, going up to the first corner. 700 metres to go, Henning in the leader. A half to Grand Express. Testa Rossa's out three deep on the fence behind them. Iron Ore, then Sally Magic. Shelt not about to come to the outside, followed by Bossy Gal Plashenko. Further back in the field, Blue Danube, Thong and Push Bike West Express, and further back, Lavina Bay into the straight, 400 to go. Henning is the leader from Grand Express. Testa Rossa, Sally Magic coming to the outside, and so too is Shelt not and then came Iron Ore. Testa Rossa in front with 300 metres to go. Sally Magic a length away, and then came Shelt not but Testa Rossa. He found another gear at the 100. He exploded away. Sally Magic in second spot, then came Shelt not and Lars Offity, but Testa Rossa, he's a great cult. Testa Rossa won the Magic Millions brilliantly. Sally Magic second, Shelt not third, fourth Lazophony, fifth home thong and push bike, and then Blue Danu Territorial never got in the call, followed by West Express Ebony Way, Iron Ore Grand Express, give them the flick, Bossy Gal, Poshanko Henning, and Lavina Bay is last of all in the Millions. Testa Rossa, he's never been on the track, he's three deep, Sally Magic four deep on the home turn, Iron Ore is just behind them and Shelt Not, she's coming to the outside launching her claim, now he goes full bore on Testa Rossa, 200 metres to go, Testa Rossa shot away, he's two lengths in front of Sally Magic, followed by Shelt Not who's running on, but it's Testa Rossa, he's going like a real machine in the last 100 metres and home he goes, Testa Rossa first by four lengths, Sally Magic second, Shelt Not got third, Love Zofany flying home got fourth, followed in by third and push bike the next one horse but now he lets down for his final drive to the line and he really made the others look ordinary uh, that is a very very good cult by anyone's standards in any race Eddie Casso is the magic horse to train he doesn't worry about anything the heat hasn't affected him the trip away settled in straight away and he's just a okay. yeah I told Eddie before the race to uh, you know there was a bit of hype with the race as you'd expect and not to get overawed by it and not to fall into the trap that because you're traveling well try and burn him off too quickly so mm. I told him to, to wait as long as he could because I knew there wasn't a horse in the race that out sprinting. Yeah, a Ferrari today he absolutely bolted in. $1.70 and $1.25 for the place. Two eighty for number 11, Sally Magic and 10 Shalt Not at $1.70. 10.20 Quinella, the trifecta, $36.20. And it's a credit yeah. to you too to have kept him on the horse too. I'm sure a lot of the top line jockeys would have been vying for a position on the horse. Well, funny you should mention it, I never had one phone call. Because uh, I think Eddie was always putting in the paper beforehand that he was riding the next start, <laughs> so he made the decision for me. I didn't have to do a thing. And Dino, golden slipper, on or off? Off.
Definitely off. Definitely off. Not tempted at all. Not at all, Richard. We'll leave that to you again this Two year. Two million dollars and you're yeah. not even tempted. No, no. That's very good. Well, very if awesome, I got no. money, I'd only have to have a shirt like that, wouldn't I? For, for a jockey to ride earlier in the day. <laughs> no, he won't be going back. He won't get me there. Uh, maybe in the spring, but uh, no, we'll concentrate on the Triple Crown and put him in the paddock and uh, get, get him ready for races like the Corp of Guinea. Congratulations. Give me back the test, test to Ross. Yeah. I mean, he did race three deep outside the leader. It yeah. wasn't if he sat third or fourth on the fence and just came off the road and went Hardest run in the race. Yeah, the hardest run in the race. Yeah. He was out, out three and four deep around the home turn, and he's raced away and won by four and a quarter lengths. I mean, it's probably the best Magic Millions win in history yesterday. Yeah. He outclassed him. Yeah. yeah, he was. That's, we did think that along, you know, probably about a month ago, but we didn't really want to say it because we thought we'd probably sound a bit too yeah. cocky because it was a long way off, but... Uh, they're set and they're racing and... Burnborough Handicap, one of the specials, 100, a win tote of $3.65. Chief De Beers, rates are 95, 425 on the tote. The Chief De Beers, 425, Blazing Steel, 930, the North, 18. Over we go to Forgotten Hero, 14, back in the saddle, 52. Roulette, 805, Divas Gold is $18. 33 for Brooklet Boy. Waterford Road, Juggler's gone forward. Big responsibility for Chris Munts, outside alley in a big way. Chief De Beers is ready. They're racing now. Juggler from the outside began okay. Chief De Beers began brilliantly in the middle of the line, and he's the early leader when they link up with the course proper. Harvey Lads going fast to second, and Forgotten Heroes going up quickly, and there goes Juggler. He's whizzed up in the fourth position on the outside as they head down Blazing Steel and Jean's interest. They've got 600 to run in the Burnborough. Harvey Lad, the leader, a neck Forgotten Hero. Chief De Beers in third. Juggler ridden along a little bit in fourth. Roulette's going up on the fence. Then Laboo Lady, Divas Gold, Waterford Road, Sahara Z and Regal Rebel around the bend Harvey Lad joined by Forgotten Hero Juggler's dropped off Chief De Beers went to third on the outside Roulette coming after him Juggler can't go on the Laboo Lady but Chief De Beers he's dashed to the front at the 150 Forgotten Hero second then Roulette Juggler Harvey Lad but it's the Chief Chief De Beers he's careering away Roulette and Forgotten Hero run the miners but Chief De Beers bolts in the Burnborough Roulette second Forgotten Hero third fourth Juggler then Harvey Lad Sahara Z Laboo Lady blazing still the North Regal Rebel Divas Gold. The next time, Jean's Interest, Waterford Road, Brooklet Boy back in the saddle. Last time, Jewel Scope, and that's his 20th win on the Doomban track. The reception of a Melbourne Cup winner. As he ends at this 36 races, 20 wins, 11 placings. So in 36 runs at Doomban, he's missed the place five times. Billy Calder. And this is a great day for Queensland racing. The crowd giving him a standing ovation. And there he is, the chief, the connections, Barry Green up on the left and the Green up family. And I guess when you look back at it, I mean, Burnborough was the Doombin champ, wasn't he? He, he won the Doombin 10,000 of the Doombin Cup when they were a week apart in handicapped conditions. But this horse is an amazing racehorse. What time's he gone? He's gone 134.44. Uh, that's a new track record. He smashed the course record. It was previously 135. He's gone 134.44. That's nearly a half a second off the track record. And he's got home in 34.55. He won by two and three quarters with a level of 1580. Minutes time. The ratings have got flavour on top. Number one, the Salinger winner with 100. Two, Paint 98. Three, Blazing Reality 98. And Theatre 98. It's going to be a competitive race. The ratings have got them one, two, three, and three event. Over 1,100 at Wait for Age. Flavour number one's at $4. Two, Paint at 9.50. Three, Blazing Reality. Exodation favourite ahead of Theatre and Flavour. And it's the same favourite as Immortal now. Flavor began OK on the inside, out quickly to Theatre and Paint, very out, out wide began very, very fast. Going past the 1,000 now, Paint Theatre getting through on the inside to join. And they're about a neck in front of Paint before the turn. Two lengths, Flavor with a drop on the leader, Plusker is outside and two sedation, blazing reality. Tauke last of the seven when they corner. Theatre on the rails, just led from Plusker and Flavor eases out to have a crack at them. And they're clear of sedation and Plusker. Theatre on the inside and Paint, first to go for the whip, Theatre. 
Peter Paints coming at him hard and then a length and a half to Flavor who's winding up with a big run. It's Flavor racing to Theater and Painter then Sedation. Flavor racing to Theater who fights on well. Flavor and Theater. Flavor one and a half head to Theater. Painter length and a half away third in front of Sedation and then Tau K, a gap blazing reality back there in company with Plushka. First start since taking out the Salinger Stakes. He ran third in this race as a three-year-old back in 97 behind Spartacus. And uh, he's really probably been a very much underrated sprinter since then. He's been placed in great races. The Salinger a couple of years ago behind Natoire. And uh, he's a Group 2 winner here and also a Group 1 winner at, at his last start in take it. Sedation's the, the one that I thought was a bit disappointing, really. In the Parramatta Leagues Club Cup, 32, 20 and 8, 20. The old mar this market. Kidman's Cove is a 10 and 3, 10. South Bend, 5, 32, 20. King steady in their racing. King of Atlantis went back shortly after the start out wide on the track. Balmaria Kidman's Cove came out like a flash and going quickly, Season Star. Unsettling Kidman's Cove, burning across. He'll go to the front from basic Season Star. Balmaria can last the fence and two links to King of Atlantis at the 550 metres mark and Kidman's Cove in front. At his girth, the outside basics. Three wide Balmaria, Season Star, the fence. Cassidy waiting for a run now on a cue from Galileo. South Bend, the fence from Zamochki. Further back, umpire then Torbellino dance with me and King of Atlantis at the 300 and Kidman's Cove got away led by two and a half length season star then came basics further back in the field at Q South Bend can't get a run but Kidman's Cove what a marvelous effort he streaked away from them four links in front of basic season star South Bend then accused but it's all Kidman's Cove a wonderful effort wins four links to basics third a photo South Bend in front of accused and season star from umpire out wide dance with me next from Torbellino what a wonderful, wonderful effort. A horse that probably shouldn't be alive. Kidman's Cove has come from the outside gate with 59 and has cantered in, untouched. 10 40 and $3 for number one and a great training effort by John Size. And he's been much too good. Not only has he won, he's absolutely bowled in. He's come home 33.74. Clearly the best of the day. 33.74. Overall time of one night. Big race today at Caulfield, and we've got uh, Sedation, 270, Tig Dignity Dancer, $2.40, Paris Dream, $7.10. Just repeating weight is right at Randwick. Push has been clearly a Dignity Dancer. The There's spectacular gold going in. Dream yeah. jump well. So did Dignity Dancer and Sedations right up there as well with the destruction point from the outside barrier zipping forward and goes to him down the side near the 600. Haven't gone all that hard. Destruction point, a half Paris Dream, a half Dignity Dancer out three wide. Spectacular girl back on the inside followed by Sedation and two to Royal Voyage when they neared the home corner. And Cassidy about to go now on the favourite Dignity Dancer. He's digging him up on the outside. Destruction point leads from Paris Dream and Dignity Dancer three wide with a good kick left it appears as they balance for home sedation getting up behind them at the 200 paris dream takes the lead cassidy's called on the favorite now dignity dancer destruction point sticks on well on the inside paris dream in front dignity dancer with a job to do to get there is lifting paris dream destruction point dignity dancer they hit the line dignity dancer i think he's got there to beat destruction point and paris dream sedation close up and then a gap to royal voyage and spectacular gold what a thrill, what a great battle between these three. Judge calls for the rail. Dignity Dancer really dug in, and he's got there number two. Number two. Dignity Dancer has won the autumn stakes. Uh, well, it's just champions do that. Basically, that's it. They win when they need to be won. They find when the... The um, name champion quite... What he rolls, of course. With the uh, For the challenge stakes at Randwick, and here we go. Masked Party, $4.57 the anthems. Go down to Ab Initio. Now, six ninety dollars can Grande come in a bit. $3.20 Ab Initio, 13 Zulu Chief for two seven dollars twenty. dollars Terry. Ab Initio, heavily backed on track, two seventy. dollars Masked Party, very firm, five ten. dollars Good money per two, seven ten. dollars can Grande out the gate. Ready for the running of the Group 2 Challenge.
They're racing. Ab Initio and on the outside, Mass Party away very quickly. Ken Grande hit the ground running and Trawick is going to seal the big grade of the front after the first 200. He'll cross and lead. Ab Initio second, Mass Thumbs before the bin. Ken Grande coasting in the lead. Rebel Rock sneaking up on his inside. Ab Initio three out. Mass Party the centre for two next. Zulu Cheap is back second last and two links to Anthems. The two is challenge fielder on the bin. Ken Grande four away from the fence turns and travels well. Rebel Rock on on his inside, Ab Initio a length away called upon. The two, two lengths further back from Mass Party. On top of the rise, Ken Grande is joined by Rebel Rock and Ab Initio. Ab Initio's levelled up to Rebel Rock. Two lengths away for two, running on fairly, but Ab Initio, Cassidy drove the grey flash clear. Ab Initio raced away, responded quickly. He raced away now from Rebel Rock and Anthems, and Ab Initio wins easily from Rebel Rock. Anthems a good run third. The two was next from Mass Party, Ken Grande. He died the last 200 metres and last of all was Zulu Chief number five the winner Ab Initio proving too good and landing a big plonk late and the winner of the race Ab Initio's had 15 starts for 10 wins so it's a wonderful uh, strike rate Train there you go Ab Initio 251.70 Rebel Rock 330 good run by Anthem so a pointer and at the Australia Stakes, here's the ratings. The ratings have gone with Laurie's Lottery number seven. He's given the 100. Flavor gets a 93. Blue Storm gets a 93. And the other three-year-old in the race gets a 93. So it's Rand Archway, uh, who's uh, been freshened up since a win in the VRC Oaks, but she's a Group 1 winner. She's got class, there's no doubt about that. And uh, they're about to head out onto the track. Night racing at Mooney Valley, a great success again tonight. Here's the full call, $4.60 for number one flavour. One of them up, $3.80, and theatre at $3.60. That pool building up all the time. And finally, number nine, Grand Archway. She's holding up pretty well on the tote. She's $11, 10 New South Wales. Blue Storm, there was good support for it early. Laurie's Lottery's going to start favourite just ahead of theatre, and Grand Archway's been a drifter. Is that a quick summary? And a beautiful start in the group one with Laurie's Lottery out wide fighting the front. Tauke was away swiftly, so too is Theatre. Theatre hunting up along the inside to keep Laurie's Lottery. There's the first surprise. Leads in three quarters of a length with Blue Storm third the outside and then Tauke fourth the rail from Flavor. Grand Archway out wide, followed by Whistle Up Alpha, and Hon Kwok Star is last of all. Oliver has Theatre the leader. Laurie's Lottery right on his outside, a neck away. Blue Storm working three wide. Two links just behind them. Grand Archway going around the outside with a searching run from Flavor and Tauke held up on the rail. Then Whistle Up and Alpha and Hon Kwok Star last of all. At the turn and Theatre the leader. Laurie's Lottery niggled at hard now by York. Theatre probably travelling equally as well as him as he kicks a length in front. Grand Archway running on on the outside from Flavor. It's Theatre in front of Laurie's Lottery. Grand Archway storming home. Theatre being tackled now by Grand Archway coming home the better. Theatre, Grand Archway. Grand Archway grab Theatre. Not much in it. The Phillies put in a big lunge on the post. Flavor third, I think, from Laurie's Lottery. Just behind those to finish then. At the head of the others was Tauke over on the inside. Uh, back there in company with Whistle Up who's run to the line strongly then on Norman Grand Archway to the outside Theatre rails for home and neck in front of Laurie's Lottery and here's Grand Archway putting in a run but Theatre's got a bit of a kick he's a length in front with Grand Archway Laurie's Lottery and Flavor they're getting to Theatre Grand Archway on the outside and Theatre coming to the line Grand Archway the Oaks runner Grand Archway wins in a photo finish from Theatre he's done it again champion of the Victoria Oaks has come back with the first up win over the 1,200 metres, never on the track. She's run 110.9, just 0.6 outside of the record set by Spartacus. Right now. Yeah, Graham's with me now, Matt. Well, Graham, not too many Oaks winners can come back and win a 1,200 metre Group 1 first up. She's pretty special. Oh, yeah, we, we set her for the race, and it's a great achievement by... I think you'll see her when she races against the Colts and that in Sydney. I think she's something special. She really... ...and Graham Rogerson. She's paid 12.60 for a win, 2.50 for a place. New South Wales punters were a bit keener, 10.70 and 2.50. 5.50, Dansk, 4.20, Mastic, 7.10, Tarot Star, 6.70, All a Blur, 14, Radiant Sword, 4.80. St Last few getting ready here. Mastic about to come up now for Rod Griffiths and complete the line-up. Off now. 
Beautiful start too. Radiant Sword on the inside. One of the first to bounce out. Danska settling third to last when they find their feet now. And Prince Lee have pounced on the front ahead of Radiant Sword. A length and a half away. Up to the turn near the 600. Radiant Sword is the leader over on the inside when he swings for home. He's going to come round the corner. Just the leader to Prince Lee. And on the outside, Storm and Prince Mossman is fourth just behind them. And Mastic outside him. Danska scrubbed up following Mossman into the race when they corner. And then Murajar. Taro Star goes up on the inside. Bello Tenure swings wide. Radiant Sword at the 400 two links in front. Mossman's coming on strongly. So is Mastic on the outside and Dansk is back behind them two links away. 2.50 out. Radiant Sword is giving everything on the inside. He's being tackled by Mastic with Mossman between them. Then Taro Star. Mossman in the middle. He's put his head in front now to Mastic and Radiant Sword. Mossman draws clear. He'll be too good Mossman and Mossman goes on to win it by a length and a half to Mastic second. Radiant Sword third. Then Taro Star and Dansk. Back behind them. Bellows Senor Princely as Stormen Prince Murajar and all of Lur last of all. For Clary Connors and written by Greg Childs back into the winner's store today. Mastic pulled very hard early, he's done well. Jimmy Cassidy's mount rating 100, Speedy Kids also 100, Miss Dugar 93 and Astralita a 93. The toad call shows Will Fly 870 and this is a great field of fillies and mares in the Swetnam Stud Stakes. 3.30 Dantelar, 7.90 Miss Dugar, 33 Clemens Bell, 9.50 Speedy Kids, $11 Astralita, Emotive as we go over the page is 28 and My Millennium. Michael won the race back in 97 on Apple Danish for Anthony Cummings. Here's Avaton coming forward. The Ruffian, the Swetnam Stud Stakes, Group 2 race. $200,000 in prize money plus the free service to Rory's Jester. There's the light. And away they go. And out wide, My Millennium began brilliantly here. It's going to go forward and look for the lead. Showing good speed as well as Amber Gaze. It's on Astralita and Will Fly whip them in in the Swetnam Stud Stakes as they move up to the home turn and My Millennium's gone like the wind. My Millennium brings them into the home straight, leading by two or three to Amber Gaze. Miss Jugar was third. Cassidy easing to the outside now on Dandelar. St. Clemens Bell back near the inside, but My Millennium's got a huge lead at the 300. It's three in front of Dandelar, then Miss Jugar, St. Clemens Bell, Speedy Kids. It's My Millennium, the leader. Here's Dandelar, though. Dandelar and the pumper. Dandelar takes the lead from My Millennium, Speedy Kids and Miss Jugar, and Dandelar wins the Swetnam Stud Stakes. My Millennium second, Speedy Kids third, Miss Jugar fourth, Astralita and Will Fly both ran on late, then featherback Amber Gaze, St. Clemens Bell never fired, back within a motive, and last in, Avaton. Yep, County Rider winner, Jay Cassidy. 260 and 130, and 30 Dantelar, she had them covered pretty quickly in the straight. 330 My Millennium, and 240 Speedy Kids. Cassidy, uh, oh, she's a chunk, much travelled and uh, first past the post in the Group 1 Railway Handicap at Ellerslie recently, only to lose the race on protest to a horse called Barwa Laksana, ridden by Chris Munch. And Jim New Zealand Press excitedly mused over the possibility of surface joining the Trans-Tasman invasion for the Easter Carnival in Sydney. Trainer Noel Eels had easier fish to fry. Next up was the Waikato Draft Sprint, a 1,400-metre weight parade event at Tirapa on International Day. Into the straight, 450 out, and the leader, Penagal by two. Hero coming after, then wider out. Here's surface chiming in now. And behind them, straight back is all over the place looking for a way through. 200. 50 to go. Surface dash to the lead for Noel Harris. Surface looking good. Integrates running on late, followed by Amy J and Panagal. But our oh, surface, surface is demoralising them over the final stages. He is pricked and won it in a canter. Surface completed the season as one of the exciting, but relatively untapped young horses in New Zealand. And the progeny included Derby winners, All Ashore, Sharks Fin, and Surface Paradise. One of the best days racing in New Zealand every year it takes place at Hamilton's Tarapa track in early to mid-February. International Day features two Group 1 races, with the centrepiece being the Wakanui Stud International, a weight parade race over 2,000 metres. 
350 to go. Greenstone Charm, four links in front of Hero Smith coming after it. Bluebird, the word is next. Batavian putting in a bit, then Del Coronado. 300 metres to go. Hero Smith ranged up alongside of Greenstone Charm. And behind them running on Bluebird, the word. The message is running at them late. Hero Smith in front of the 100 metres. Here's Fatal coming after it. Hero Smith, the big guy's going to win it. Hero Smith. Aero Smith may not have run up to his relatively easy win from Darazari, Jezebel, Tide and Alton Company in the Turnbull Stakes at Flemington the previous spring, but this was still a victory of immense pride for trainers Peter and Nicky Hurdle. That's the Alistair Clark Stakes. Mossman is at $4.90. Dignity Dance at $2.10. $1.50 on the New South Wales tote. Sedation, $4.20. Paris Dream, $9.60. Destruction, $11. Dignity Dancer is vulnerable today. Same thing happened though in the autumn stakes, didn't it? But it's it's a real race this, despite the fact there's only the six runners. Behind them in two, Delirious. Here's the first turn looming up now. Dignity Dancer, he's back there. He's third on the inside. Oh, he and Mossman are having a real bump. And he's pushed Mossman off the track, Dignity Dancer there. Into the back, and uh, he's trying to pocket Dignity Dancer. Uh, here, uh, Greg Childs on Mossman. And he's got pushed right back, Dignity Dancer, to second last now. And destruction point at the thousand. Lead sedation. The brakes have gone on. Delirious whipped up fast. Then Mossman on the outside of Dignity Dancer. Are they watching one another? And a length of Paris Dream back last of all. It's destruction point off the back at the 800. He's been left alone in front. Up second now Delirious. And sedation's going to push through between the two leaders. He's had a beautiful run and he's gone through to tackle for the front now. Then Mossman and Dignity Dancer is pocketed hopelessly on the rails with Paris Dream last of all. Uh, by the school and sedation work to the lead now over destruction point dignity dancer is pushing his way into the clear mossman is still there on his outside he's coming with a run sedation's been headed off by dignity dancer mossman is coming after dignity dancer and they're followed by paris dream who's starting to stoke up and around the turn dignity dancer there's been a few things go wrong for him he corners a length in front of mossman and paris dream dignity dancer out in the middle mossman having the last crack at him dignity dancer tackled by mossman dignity dancer kicking like a tiger Mossman trying hard. Dignity Dancer hung out but won. Did everything wrong but he's won Dignity Dancer from Mossman. Paris Dream third from Delirious. Then Sedation and uh, Destruction Point last of all. Dancer gets out, pushes Mosman to the outside and they quickly race to Sedation. At the 400 metre mark and Dignity Dancer out deep. Drew a neck in front, Mosman having another crack at him. A length further back in the race, Sedation and now Paris Dream with its last run, they turn for home. Dignity Dancer a half, Mosman. Then Paris Dream at the 180 metre mark, Dignity Dancer in front. Mosman having another crack at him, levels up, it's Mosman and Dignity Dancer. Dignity Dancer is digging, he's a neck in front. Mosman having another crack, Dignity Dancer. Dignity Dancer, mighty effort, wins ahead, Mosman. They drifted out wide. Four lengths away, third, Paris Dream from second. They had a tremendous hip and shoulder at the turn at the 1,200 metres. And then Childs just sat outside him all the way, shoved him away in a zip fastener, coming past the school, which Jim was able to do the Houdini job on. And he's got that $4.90, trifecta 22.10, running double, a pair of twos, $47.70. Dignity Dancer by Zabil, himself a winner of this race back in uh, 1990. He also won and now. And a couple of little words there to Greg. Ooh. Now, we can't pick the sound up here. And he's having a long... So he spied in a protest uh, immediately without bothering to... Uh, have a look at the stewards video as i mentioned and, and you did uh, a, a good protest <laughs> uh, he's had three cracks at it 1200 700 and 100. Uh, there's a quality rider for you in the heat. haven't moved in at morfordville Certainly wasn't jockey error, wasn't deliberate, and I had no, no intention of being there. 
admittedly clearly shows Greg Childs coming left out of the saddle to hold me there. So I can't see where he was saying I was going out. He was entitled to the bandstand. The uh, protest dismissed Dignity Dancer is the Alistair Clark champion for 99. Uh, horses and great horsemen. Uh, I do think Greg Charles went into the ring with Jim Cassidy and come off second best. But nevertheless, it was, as Keith said, a very good joust. Most entertaining. Keith, two very good racehorses. And Dignity Dancer now, first step down towards his uh, bid for the Million Dollar Triple Crown. Yes, and Bruce, I must, I must point out at this stage that both Dignity Dancer <laughs> and Mossman come from you nowhere. <laughs> and even the minor place getter comes from you nowhere. Speaking of you... Because of Mossman's defeat in Melbourne. Yes, John, I, I thought he should have won the race. Um, he's got better half-head. Uh, Greg Charles protested on three different occasions. And um, I thought the horse should have won the race, and, and we didn't the track. Well, you know, we're entitled to hold our own ground, and uh, right on the post he comes out again and, and takes us out right on the post again. I, I just thought we had enough ground, so when you get beat the half-head, that we sort of, the punish should have been upheld, I thought. Mm. Uh, yeah, I have to say, I think Clary's right. I think, uh, I think you're a bit unlucky there, Clary. Uh, in my... Super sharp. Right, Mr. Innocent, the top rate ahead of Splendid Force, as we check the uh, Randwick update. Here's that uh, rate, ratings again. Arena third and Shin Can C. That's the order of Sky ratings for the fourth. Min Mr. Innocent clearly ahead. Here's the market. Prowl at fifteen twenty-seven dollars for Arena. Dracula ten. Mr. Innocent a dollar eighty is at nine dollars twenty for. Uh, he looks looks very well. Your tip? Uh, my selection the race, Mr. Innocent, uh, mix horse. Uh, he looks really really. Mick Dipman in the saddle, the favourite, and they're racing, and they've broken a great line. Shin Can see and Mr. Innocent away quickly, and Prowl's going quickly. Splendid horses booting up on the inside to keep the other three wide. Two links to Mile leads the way. Six links to Arena. Lawyer the outside. Four links Dracula. On the bend at the 600 metres mark and the golden slipper winner. Prowl just led from Splendid Horse the fence. Two links away. Shin can see Mr. Innocent being niggled out. Oh, Dippin had to give the whip to him there to make ground on the fence. They were followed by Maestro Maker, Arena, Lawyer and Dracula into the stretch. At the 400, Prowl outside Splendid Horse. Brown yet to go for him. A length away. Shin can see Boss having looks over his shoulder. Mr. Innocent under pressure behind those and then came Maestro maker coming hard arena lawyer down the outside and dracula starting to wind up lawyers after shin can see and dracula starting to pelt home in front of shin can see he's the leader arena's getting up on the inside lawyer and dracula dracula on the outside got up and won it a nose dracula in the last stride from lawyer and arena they were followed by shin can see maestro maker mr innocent gone at the 600 well back was prowl and a long last to splendid horse he's pulled up very abruptly past the line last down to the 200 they go shin can see after prowl they beat off splendid horse mr innocent can't get up lawyer coming home well maestro maker and dracula it's shin can see in front arena flashing home lawyer the outside lawyer races up and going with him dracula oh boy oh boy this is a real head bobber lawyer dracula dracula and lawyer headed locked together from arena and him arena got up on the inside and then dracula right on the line has dropped the head and I fancy he'll get up and score in a very tight photo finish. But looking at that replay, that is, whew, that is tight. Very tight. Lawyer's got it. Number five's got it. Lawyer Shane Dye. Second goes to number three, Dracula. And $14.70 and two eighty. Lawyer, a son of Wajib. Dracula, $2.70 and Arena, four fifty. And uh, had he not had such a chequered passage in the straight, he most assuredly would have won a real vintage year for three rods. Remember the saintly octagonal for Lonte, oh, nothing yes. like a day. We might have it again. Certainly the Victoria Derby is looking very good. One point, though, uh, in yesterday's race, they went very hard in front, which made it for the back markers. However, the back markers, Arena, Dracula, Lawyer, had considerable scope for improvement. Very good run from Shin Can C2, but Arena should have won the race. Most unlucky and uh, is going to be a major force in the autumn. Yeah, I agree, Max. And also, I mean, it's a cruel bob of the head, wasn't it? If photo finish was, uh, finishes were judged on rumps, then uh, Dracula would have had a cheeky win, I think. He's <laughs> 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 been working on that. I think the stride before the post, Dracula was in front. Yeah. And then he said, come up. My horse's head went down right on the post. And uh, next stride, Dracula was in front again. So it was just a bob of the head. Yep. Interestingly, Clary... Significantly, the last three horses into the straight finished one, two, three. And, uh, you know, great runs from, from all the place getters, but I particularly like the run of Arena. When the other two horses peeled to the outside, Lawyer and Dracula, they were wound up a good 
hundred metres before Arena even it could start getting wound up because he was still locked in behind a, a wall of horses. So uh, he probably had uh, less opportunity, Arena, and only went down by uh, the narrowest of margins. So I was extremely impressed. Um, I think Sydney are holding all the cards with the three-year-old Colts. They've got uh, Mossman and Dignity Dancer in Melbourne, Lawyer, Arena and Dracula and others in Sydney. Um, I don't think there's a Melbourne cult can, can get within Kiwi of them. I think uh, Melbourne's walking. Kidman's Cove and Dodge, $1.40 General Nadeem, 13, a tie the knot, Quick Flick 8.90, Dodge 13, Anthem's 11, 11, Kidman's Cove, Hockney 36, 29, Mr Victory. That's your market on race 6, the Express. And what should be a, an intriguing race. Dodge looked a treat. Fairly big as you would expect, but the Epsom King favourite. Set for the expressway. Gates are back. They're racing. Hockney, Quick Flick and Kidman's Cove out wide away quickly. And General Nadine bounce with them on the inside. Quick Flick's going to the tail of the field. Five links covers them on the bend at the 450. And General Nadine went up on the inside to go to the front. And a clear leader from Quick Flick. Coming out wide, Kidman's Cove giving chase to the champ. Back on the inside, Hockney. Two links to Dodge running on well. On top of the rise, Burn yet to summons the biggest effort now from the champ. General Nadine in front. Kidman's Cove is running a bit of a race. He's levelled up at the 200. Kidman's Cove's put his nose in front. He's just the leader. General Nadine's coming again. General Nadine the inside and Kidman's Cove stride for stride the general in front Kidman's Cove's got him has he I don't know they hit it the outside I think Kidman's Cove's just got there from General Nadim. tie the knot finished third and a great run first up they were followed by Hockney then came Dodge Mr Victory quick flick and Anthem's last home Nadim in front Kidman's Cove got to the bet the better of him got about a, a head in front and here we go they hit the line I reckon he's won for sure and certain Kidman's Cove 70, 190, $1.20 and tie the knot, $2.70. Updating I think we're not going to see him dominate races like we did in the autumn. I know he had the bad run in the Oakley, but I think he's going to have to take his turn now. Even though I know he won well at the Gold Coast, I don't think he's a, a superior sprinter anymore. No, that's, that's for the horse running last. Tie the knot, red, white cap. This is going to be the star of the... Of, he's going to take us into the noughties, I think. This uh, Tie the knot. He's, yep, he's going to be a superstar. Again, I can't argue, but you know where Tie the knot comes from, don't you? See, I'll argue with both of you. If he's a superstar and going to be... We'll, we'll see each other in six weeks' time. I'm not a superstar, run. but he's going, he's going to win very, very good races. I hope he's he a does. top racehorse. He has been, and I think he could be even better, this, uh, this preparation. I'll argue it's with just you. Your, it's just your definition of superstar. I'll argue with you, Bruce. I think he's going to be a serious threat to Might and Power. That's how good I think he's okay, going to be. Okay, well, he's here. Where's Might and Power? Well, he, he could have... Yeah, uh, you know, you, you, you stated earlier that he might have been on the worst part of the track. Yeah, I think so, John. We, we you know, we analysed all the racing later on the day and uh, analysed his race and everything, the result of it. And I don't think there was a horse one on the fence all day, really. Uh, the two-year-old the first race early on, he's a two or three off the fence. But other than that, there's nothing one on the fence. Yeah. And he didn't make up much ground right on the fence all day. And... Uh, I, as I said also, I think the horse is a better 1,400 metre horse now, and a, or 1,600 metres. Yeah. The way I train him, I think that's what he wants. You know? right. Do you think yesterday that the battle up in front... Cove was with Gay Waterhouse for a short time, a little over a year ago. One morning at the track, he got rid of his jockey, crashed through three or four fences, and the vets doubted that he'd ever race again. Yeah, it's quite an extraordinary story, isn't it? That uh, he's been able to get back up to... Uh, to that level, uh, quite uh, quite incredible. But uh, I had to. I was interested to hear from Clary there that he thinks uh, General Nadim is is a better horse at uh, 14 to 1600 metres. And I just think watching the replay of the race there, uh, another 20 metres, and he's back in front and winning the race again. So I, I guess that confirms it. And. You know, as Clary said, a lot of... ...in with a 93. Zuccarino, 93, and an improving type in Thackeray, number 7, gets a 93. So 6, 1, 2, and 7, race 3. There's a few improving types in this. Gold Guru, $4.60. Zuccarino, 4.30. 14 for prime address. Here's Zuccarino coming up into the line. We await just the last three to move along then. Simply true. 1,500 on their journey now. Thackeray jump well. On the inside, Prime Address out nicely, and so too going forward, the grey Zaccarino towards the front. Royal Blues going up as well. Video fan easing after a pretty good beginning. 
and Gold Guru dropped out to last by the Sakurai. One prime address, one simply true. Wonder Video Fan on the rails, and Gold Guru is hard ridden last of all. Can't tack onto them. Uh, coming up to the turn with about 600 metres to go. Life has used a bit of petrol. He swings the corner now for Greg Childs, about four in front of Kabila Royal Blue. Zuccarino on the inside, swinging out wide Thackeray. Then Prime Address followed by Video Fan, simply true, and about three or four Gold Guru. Loafer at the 400 has about three lengths on Kabila and Thackeray. Zuccarino trying to get a run through off the rail. Royal Blue and then Prime Address inside the three now. Loafer getting tied. Thackeray's claiming him. Zuccarino in the clear and Prime Address but Thackeray raced to Loafer and he's burst to the front. He's flat though, Prime Address and Zuccarino are trying to reach him. Thackeray with 50 to go, a length and a half. Prime Address, he's holding them at bay, Thackeray. And Thackeray and the Gouts win it by two lengths. Prime Address second, Zuccarino third. A gap to Royal Blue and Loafer followed by Video Fan. Kabila simply true and Gold Guru, probably the worst run of his life, five lengths last race he paid 3.30 for a win and 1.50 for a place three prime address 3.60 Hub lightning stakes and here are the sky ratings they've gone with show now emotion he rates 100 eight a point gets a 98 theater comes in with a 95 and isca gets a 95 so four eight 12 and 13 fin dollars and 70 cents al mansoor at 20 three masked party at 40 dollars four show now emotion 420 16 for natoire 20 el morada uh, in 89, 11 Scandinavia, 34 Blaze the Turf Theatre at $5.90 has been kept very safe and Iska number 13 is at $4.60. And Iska? And uh, it's respected her turn of foot. Uh, Iska, I guess it is to a lot of people a surprise favourite being as short as she is at $2.80. She's never started in a group race and it's all been on the tremendous wraps that have been put on her by the stable and She's been not exclusively back, but into $2.80. She's extremely tight. Lightning. Racing. Esca out well with Blazer Turf on the inside ahead of a point. El Morada, Toledo and Zed of Eaton. There the horses going to the flat side, led clearly by Esca. Out on the grandstand side, Natoire with great paces, leading with Mask Party and Show No Emotion going up to join them. 600 and it's Iska nicely clear on the flat cleat about two and a half lengths in front of Toledo and shows the way in the race blaze the turf under pressure third from El Morada a point and Zedevit last of the horses down on the flat the grandstand again and it's the Twa mask party and show no emotion from El Mansour and Scandinavia trying to get a run through them with theatre last on that division on the other side Iska's well clear of Toledo and then El Morada she's in front overall I think Iska El Mansour and Scandinavia out on the grandstand side but it's Iska clear, and Iska the brilliant Finney takes out the lightning. Iska beat Toledo, either El Morada or Scandinavia for third from Theatre, and then El Mansour, followed by a point, Zedevit, Blaze the Turf, Mask Party, or Show No Emotion, has finished second last, and Natoire's last. On the outside, it's El Mansour hitting the front, Scandinavia out late, Iska and Flood over on the flat side, a length in front, Toledo after it, Iska the three-year-old filly does too well, Iska just over a length to Toledo, two away third might be El Morada or Scandinavia the outside fence, then theatre from El Mansour. The first filly since capped on teams in 1975 to win a lightning stakes, Greg Childs picks up a group one, trained by Peter Hayes, the reps enormous having compared her to special and she's lived right up to them with a stunning win toledo's run second written by now flemington dividends on the lightning isca two dollars eighty and a dollar and forty cents boy she firmed up in the last little bit toledo two dollars ninety scandinavia three ten another honest run said for thought that uh, she showed qualities very reminiscent and reminded me of special oh and yeah also I won this race, I think, three times, and it was lovely to see Peter win it. So that's the fourth winner from Lindsay of this race, yeah. What are you going to do with the column? Double look for the vanity. Rose of War, $2.30. Uh, dollar eighty New South Wales and two ten Queensland. Follow Gold, 23 970 Visual Displays. 17 Northern Song, 870 Lady Elsie. 34 My Jasper and got Rose of War and Rose of Dane, 25. 53.90 and natural bill number 16 at $6.40.
It's 40 for Rosa War and they're at the gates at Flemington. Natural Bell 6, 890 Lady Elsie. Visual displays 10. Favourite off they go. A beautiful start to my Jasper away well. At the hurry Northern Song straight to the lead over follow gold. Lady Elsie away fast moving up on the outside by Rose of Dane who's over on the outside when they came to the turn and visual displays on the rail last of all natural bell before the bend the leader northern song is second follow gold on the inside is third they're followed by wichita out wider lady elsie between horses cornering rose of war about to, to come to the outside now and then mad damn wider out and hosiery getting up on the inside from dane la natural bell's been headed by northern song with 350 meters to go lady elsie running on with wichita and rose of war in the pink sleeves and cap down the outside northern song lady elsie rose of war claiming them follow gold running on from aphrodite Rose of War getting to Lady Elsie and Northern Song, who's fighting back on the rail 100 to go. Rose of War, three out, Northern Song, the rail, Lady Elsie. Rose of War, Northern Song, Lady Elsie, what a great drive to the line. This is very close. Rose of War, the outside, Lady Elsie, and Northern Song on the rail. A beautiful finish. Just behind them, Dane Lar, Aphrodite, follow gold, and they're trailed then by My Jasper. Visual displays made ground, and then came Hosiery. Further back in the field, Rose of Dane, followed by Natural Bell, who's weak and very badly in the run home. Wichita towards the end and to decide it. Rosa War's got it, number two. It's Damien again. Racked up three for the day. No Rose of War was the winner there. 250, 130. Northern Song, 450. Lady Elsie, $2.50. Quintley Sheila now at $1.50. 940 Dance Baby Dance. Two good goes on the tote. Miss Penny Money is a half to Merlin by Brocco. 570, 720 the Golden Dane. To T Ruddock slow, rail true, Mercedes Benz prelude filly about to go. All in the gate is them. All clear is given. They're on their way. North East Sheila began very fast over near the outside. Dance Baby Dance jumped out well from Cloyster Card Queen on the rail. Settling behind them then is Dane. Heading to the 600 metres and the flying North East Sheila. About two lengths to Cloyster and Card Queen the rail. Miss Penny Money's improved her position to be fourth a half length away from those horses. And then Dance Baby Dance and the Golden Dane. North East Sheila more than two in front. Coming to the home turn from Card Queen. And on the outside there Miss Penny Money when they corner. Into the straight now. Nash Rubilla hasn't let her down yet. North East Sheila two in front. Card Queen came off the fence to have a go at her now. Now she's asked to accelerate at the 200 metres. North East Sheila by two card queen and then miss penny money and dance baby dance northeast sheila flat as a strap card queen's coming at her hard card queen coming at northeast sheila card queen's grabbed the lead and card queen one at a half length northeast sheila dance baby dance third ahead of miss penny money and then a long break to cloister and the golden dane last of all northeast sheila takes defeat for the first time greg hall back in the winner's stall on now and 20 to 1, nine. Don't your ability in Sydney Top. from 4, 2 and 3. Testa Rossa very short, $1.50. 20 Real Jester, Cullen, 9.20. Charm Scene Land, $7.90. Peter Merton's aboard. Mercedes Benz, Blue Diamond Prelude for the Colts and Geldings. Here's Greg. All in now. Favourite draw on the outside. Off. Testa Rossa began OK. Cullen flew out of the gates. Downing Street, Real Jester out quickly. As they settle down, Neverland at the 600. Neverland three quarters. Cullen, Real Jester third on the outer. On the rails then, honour the name, followed by Sudurka. Testa Rossa dug up a little on the outside to make his run. Two behind him then, Charm Scene Land, Keenland the inside and Downing Street from Lord Bigston last. Real Jester moved up and on the outside of him, Testa Rossa is desperately ridden now by Cassa to come after them. Cullen kicks on the inside. It's Cullen, Real Jester. Testa Rossa's having a real battle on the outside and Charm Scene Land is coming home. Home. Real Jester and Cullen are the leaders from Charm Scene Land. Testa Rossa battling. Test out coming at them hard as Charm Scene Land. Charm Scene Land's grabbed them and beaten Real Jester. Cullen third the inside. Testa Rossa has run fourth. In behind them then honour the name Sudurka and uh, out wider was Downing Street. Followed by Keenland, Lord Bigston and Neverland dropped out to last. Peter Mertens and Peter Hayes take out the Colts and Geldings division of the Blue Diamond Prelude, 14.8 way and Buster Jones is next. Intergaze number one on the uh, Super Tab is 57 Alpha, $7.80. Darren Gauchy aboard. Bazile Bay, Jimmy Cassidy, 450. Long odds is to Dad and Markham. Buster Jones, $8. La Volta, $27. Danny Brereton to ride. Laurie's Lottery, $5.50 with Hawley aboard. 
Patton, Grand Arch, oh, Bomber Bill, $4.60, in from $6.90, Jason Patton to ride, and he uh, gave us a good look up about it, it's going well, and Grand Archway, $4.60, for Jimmy Cassidy aboard as we check the ore stakes market, into Gaze, 53 Alpha, $9, $3.70, Bazile Bay, $7.50, Lorries, Lottery number 8, Bomber Bill, $5, and $4.70 for Grand Arch. Uh, quickly, what are your thoughts? Miles. Thanks. The race made uh, Group 1 back in 1993 when Durbridge won it. We've seen two Melbourne Cup winners since then return here and win. Jean and Saintly. Three-year-old side flashing. All clear. Racing. And Markham missed it by three lengths. Bazile Bay settled third or fourth last, but going forward, Buster Jones settled second last, and Laurie's Lottery straight to the lead for Greg Hall at the 1,200. Led Bomber Bill and quickly moving up Bazile Bay on the outside. Races into the lead. So Bazile Bay took it up in a race of changes. Last of all, Markham by the 800. And Bazile Bay a length and a quarter. Bomber Bill. Laurie's Lottery is in the box seat third. Grand Arts way outside. It means on the outside of those horses. Estadatus push wide to make a run. Two or three lengths further back. Lavolder and Buster Jones. Three lengths to Alpha. One and a half to Intergaze. And Markham ridden along at the back. Coming towards the turn near the 400 metres now. And uh, here it's Bazile Bay being tackled left, right and centre. Out wide. Grand Archway's moved up to have a crack at him. They swing wide. Bomberville between them. Estadard out wide and Laurie's Lottery got the rails run. Bazile Bay kicks in the straight. Laurie's Lottery coming at him on the inside and Grand Archway the outside. Great battle. Three across the track here. Grand Archway, Bazile Bay and on the inside Laurie's Lottery. Grand Archway and Bazile Bay. A great battle. It's Grand Archway going home the better. And the filly won it by a neck, Bazile Bay. Estadard's run a giant third. Then came Laurie's Lottery. Behind them, Intergaze, followed by LaVolta. Then came Alpha, trailed by Buster Jones. Bomberville weakened badly, and Markham last to finish. Grand Archway just keeps on winning. The wakeful Victoria Oaks winner came back and blew them away in the Australia Stakes, and she's ground out a magnificently tough win in the Group 1 CF4, beating Bazile Bay. Third going to Estadar, 10-3-4. And Zane Dye becoming the first filly to take out the CF4 since surround in 1977. Grand Archway, what can we say? I think she's just one hell of a horse. She, she beat him easy and Shane looked after her a bit and uh, we're looking for all these horses that are going to beat her. But uh, I think she's uh, something special. You know, we got Dignity Dance at the Archway, 481.70. Bazille Bay, $1.60. Estadar, 12.80. It'll be a little while yet before we have correct weight. Right. You have to ride on her too soon, far too soon. But I didn't want Basil Bay getting an easy run from the half mile to the turn and then kicking. Because I wouldn't have picked him up. He would have been too good. So I had to make use of her from about the 700 or 800 to about the 400, which was far too soon. But she's a very, very good filly. She's very underrated. Shane isn't pretty sure about that. Will you ride her? No, I won't. I won't be here to ride her. I'll be in Sydney riding. It's a bit unfortunate. But um, back on the Australian Cup, I hope. Are you confident that you get back on? I mean, I mean, I know it's media talk, but uh, they're saying if you get off, they won't put you back on. It doesn't worry me. If that happens, it happens. That's something that's out of my hands. I don't care. They just lose the best jockey in Group One races. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> uh, you cropped that, did you, Richard and Simon? Oh, I love him. He's so cocky. Well, but uh, he does ride Confidence is a well. great thing. Confidence yeah. is a great thing. He's got the record to back it up. But um... today. Uh, I think all it come down to was the weight difference of six kilos, the three-year-old. Um, you know, I had no doubt he'd make the step to weight for age, and he's proved that today. Um, I can't Must have been just short of peak condition, and wasn't it good to see Intergaze Gaze, stretching yeah. out so, so yeah. well coming to the line? But what a fantastic duel down the straight it was between Grand Archway and Bazile Bay. Richard, Grand Archway, she's a bit of a freak, isn't she? She's a great filly, that. Yeah. Um, I think she proved herself in the spring, and she's proving herself every week. And going to the line here, he's a very tough competitor, Bazile Bay, and he's doing all he can do there, but she's just worried him out of the prize. <coughs> and, um, excuse me, uh, Ister Dad running home into uh, third place there, but you sort of expect that from Ister Dad. He's a good, tough old campaigner. But uh, great effort for 23. Miss Sprinkley, the top rater, uh, ahead of commands, Dane Bridge and Mar Tree. Ten ahead of one, three, and six. Here's the tote core. Please note the track has been upgraded to good at Rose Hill. Commands $1.70, 20 Shogun Lodge, Danebridge 760, 18 Roguish, Hemingway is out, Martree 15, 27 Passmore, Whistler at $20, Katima number 9, 10, Miss Brinkley $10, and...
take you to Terry Bailey for the uh, Silver Slipper of 1999, and it's into a $1.70 now, Command, and Miss Brink. Seema stood well. Racing this time and pass more near the inside a shade slow to go. Roguish won the kick. Boulevard and also going out quickly. Dane Bridge. Miss Brinkley as wide as Katima Reeses. Come to the bend. Shogun Lodge. The front runner on the fence. Roguish. He's a half in front of the filly. Miss Brinkley about to up tempo and go after the leader. Dane Bridge to the outside. Behind those on the fence. Boulevard getting a run. Katima's down the outside and commands is back in the ruck and under pressure. At the 200 metres mark. Roguish in front. Boulevard getting up on the inside. The bolter. Boulevard spotted the gap and went to the front. Passmore's after the filly. Passmore leveled up to Boulevard with 100 to run. Boulevard in front. Passmore lunging. Boulevard clinging on. Passmore gets the upper hand and wins the silver slipper. Passmore's won from Boulevard and Martree flew to run third. They were followed by Rogish Katima. Shagan Lodge commands never ever a winning possibility. Well back Miss Brinkley in company with Whistler and Dane Bridge. A shock failure. He ran last. Passmore the winner. Number seven giving Jack Denham the race for the second year in a row, 24.60 and 5.10 from the one... Pass more, 24.60, 5.10, uh, Boulevard, $13.10, Martry, $3.50. Brian York, 40s into 16s, thank you. Boulevard, 100 to 1, Martry at 14 to 1, commands 5 to 4 on. Well, Pat Webster's a good judge of two-year-old form. Sensational. Yeah, very Shogun unlucky. Lodge, yeah. The team are hanging out very quite badly in the straight, as you'll see a Shogun Lodge severely and almost knocks Shogun Lodge over. So yeah. you have to think that that may have cost Shogun Lodge the race yesterday. Well, watch here, Joe. Is another one. Mm. Bang! That's a good bump. That yeah. one. But uh, he's certainly a horse to watch. Shogun Lodge certainly. The former Golden Slipper favourite commands, yeah. and also the Bart Cummings trained Dane Bridge, the full brother to uh, Dane Ripper, who did pull up very sore. I understand. Stewards did ask, but it's way too far away. I'm not going to take a guess. Four. It is Iron Horse 24, Adam 550, Confiscate 19, the Malagua 690, 53 Brave Prince, Abinicio 280, Future King 8 dollars 20, Sovereign State 33 dollars number eight. Uh, technique 17, Princely 41 dollars. All right, well, uh, we'll go back to Terry just a moment. He's not quite ready there, Terry. Iron Horse 31, 610, Adam. I've over the page, Techniques 18, 29, Princely. Frederick Purcell Stakes. The Ross of a dead down the track. Yeah. Geo flew out from out wide on the track, land siding away quickly, and Adam on the fence jumped away smartly. Princely's not far away from Sovereign State and Future King on the fence. A brave Prince confiscate and Luigi the Great whip them in. Abinicio's gone hard up in front. He turns by a length on Adam. Future King the inside looking for a run, land siding the out a little Lucifer getting up on the fence making ground. They were followed by Princely Techniques and Malaguas under pressure behind those looking for a run. Abinicio in front, boss is yet to pull the persuader. He'll have to get desperate now land sightings a length away little lucifer on the fence about to scream home but abinicio booted away got away from little lucifer and land sighting abinicio in great form and he goes on to win from land sighting and little lucifer not far away was adam from future king malagua sovereign state then came princely further back to brave prince techniques well back with confiscate einhorse and luigi 7160 land sighting three dollars little lucifer three dollars twenty zealand galloper tycoon lil could have become one of the turf greats, but she's broken a bone in her leg. The injury happened during light track work in Auckland yesterday. Owner Peter Walker said it was possible the four-year-old could recover from the injury and even make a return to the track, but he wasn't prepared to risk her chances as a broodmare. Tycoon Lil hit the headlines after winning three Group 1 races, including the Canterbury Guineas, in Sydney. The mare was being prepared for a winter campaign in Brisbane. Lil, she's going to bolt in. For uh, Dignity Dancer, Dance 740, Raw Voyage 23, Delirious $11 as we take your track side. And this is uh, an exciting time here, small field, but tactics all important. Great clash, Mossman, 1800 metres, second leg of the three-year-old Triple Crown, off they go. Beautiful start. Delirious, one of the first out from Mossman. Cassidy eases immediately on Dignity Dancer to settle at the back of the field early. Mossman Royal Voyage go to the lead together from Delirious. Then Dansk and Dignity Dancer staying out wide, last of the five. 
Parson on the railway side and Royal Voyage just a leader. Dignity Dancer is a head away. A length and a half to Dansk on the inside of Mossman and Delirious goes up on the outside of those two now. So Mossman has pocketed down the side where Royal Voyage the leader. Dignity Dancer is only a head away as they go to the 600. Delirious is out three wide. Dance back on the inside and Mossman. 500 left to go now. The pressure starting to wind up. Dignity Dancer nearly level. Royal Voyage on the rail. Delirious third. Dance held up. Mossman last of the five. Three lengths covered them. And to the champion three-year-olds travelling sweetly. Dignity Dancer. The papa lets him have a little leather now. And around the turn, Dignity Dancer puts it to Royal Voyage. Then Dance getting into the clear. Mossman out wide. They reach the 200 metres. And Dignity Dancer drew a length and a half in front. Dance is sticking to him pretty well with Mossman on the outside. Dignity Dancer's under the whip. Dance is having a rally through on the inside. But Dignity Dancer puts his stamp on the race and wins it three quarters to Dance second. Mossman close up third from Delirious and Royal Voyage. And he's going to be a short favourite there. He's too good for them, the way he's racing right now, and he's going to get better with the bigger track and the longer distance. No third dividend for Mossman. Quinella $4.40. Traffic to $10 even. And the running double on 8 and 2, 17. Now, taking it. now you go to the Guineas. Yeah, look, he's a moral to win the Triple Crown now. They can't beat him. If they're going to beat him, they would have beat him at the Valley. They've talked all week. Mossman could beat him. They're not good enough. He's too good. Well, he's actually not that easy a horse. to dance at the moment. Four in a row, he's got two legs of the Triple Crown. Bruce, Dignity Dance is a winner, I think that's the important part. He's shown he can overcome adversity to win, and it's, it's the courage there. And, and what a, another fine ride, fine tactical ride by Cassidy. Uh, it would appear, at least at the last two starts, that it's been the ride that has won the race, but certainly he's riding a very game horse now. Is he inconvenienced there? Has he lost an iron because he had to stop a couple of yards? I, I would have liked to have seen him draw away a little bit more under normal circumstances, but I think he's done enough to maintain the, the rating of a very, very good three-year-old. Max, the, uh, the buckle popped out of his near side iron. That's why Dignity Dancer didn't go straight. He still ran the fastest 1,800 metres on the new track at Caulfield and only two-tenths of a second outside Bow Road's record. I want to... And 12. The market, Summer Bow 8, 60, Zuccarino 10, Salinford 8, 30, on air $5. On air, well on the market, so is Salinford. Tabaran actually the second favourite in the race. There's City and racing now, and on air got away well towards the inside. Zuccarino immediately heading towards the front, and so is Royal Blue on the outside, and then Steel quickening up now. 600 left in it, and the leader Zuccarino about to head to Royal Blues. Two Steel Phoenix on air. On the outside of those is Thackeray responding to hard riding from Vesti, and then Tabaran and Summerbo held up. Zuccarino slipped away around the turn, and the grey straightened up more than two Royal Blue. Thackeray running on. Tabaran the white coming down there with Vesti. Zuccarino at the 200, more than two in front of Royal Blue. Thackeray is sticking to his guns gamely, but Zuccarino with a big lead. He's over two. Thackeray is trying hard and lifting. Zuccarino folding up. Thackeray's grabbed him a big win. Thackeray from Zuccarino. Royal Blue third. And they're followed by Tabaran, Makasin and Vesti together. Back behind those to finish in the race was Summerbo, who had little luck in the run home. And then Sir Linford on air weakened. So did Steel Phoenix and prime a horse who just keeps on improving is now one four in a row Caulfield we have dividends at Eagle Farm for you 380 390 Royal Blue six dollars thirty and Eagle Farm totes quickly Gaucher but right now let's have a look at the Oakley plate to the uh, sky ratings and the market due in about 21 minutes from now and it shows Scandinavia and Blue Storm the top raters ahead of Dantala and Theatre here's the tote call Flavor 17, 27 Al Mansour, Show No Emotion 28, 530 Dantala, Scandinavia 760, Theatre 390, $75 for Natois, number 8. And then we've got number 9, a point 34, El Mirada 12, 18, Paint Blue Storm 18, Tauke 30. Full race of the afternoon, Group 1, 115th running of the Oakley Plate. And despite the fact that Isk has been withdrawn, certainly robbing the race of Dantala, the flying mare, Jim Cassidy on board looking for the feature double. 1994, Dandelar gets set. Flavour all clear. Racing. 
Theatre seemed to dip at the start. Out quickly, Paint My Millennium must have missed it. She's back last. And out quickly, Zed of Each, Shano Emotion with Cradle Snatcher burning through on the inside. Cradle Snatcher leads, Magic Music wrestles up on the inside to hold the rail. Painter's third. Dandelar gets up to 4.30 from Zed of Eat, and then came Theatre over on the inside. Wider out, Scandinavia, Shano Emotion, followed by El Mansour. My Millennium getting up on the inside of City Hall. Two further back, Natoire, followed by a point, Tauke. They're being trailed then by Blue Storm. Well back approaching the turn from Flavor El Mirada and Declare. And uh, at the turn at the 400, Magic Music had got through on the inside and leads Cradle Snatcher, Paint Wider out. Then Zed of Eat, Dandelar trying to get into the clear. Theatre over on the inside behind the leader. Magic Music kicked by two at the 200. Paint's coming after it, followed by Cradle Snatcher. And now Dandelar coming home well with a point weaving through. Magic Music, Paint, and on the outside, Dandelar. Paint, Magic Music, Dandelar. Paint hit the front, Dandelar lunge. Oh, couldn't pick it. Between Dandelar and Paint, there's nothing in it. Photo for third, a point ran on hard and Magic Music held on grimly. Just behind those to finish in the race, El Mansour, Tauke, Declare, Scandinavia and Theatre. They were followed by Cradle Snatcher. Then uh, behind these to finish was Flavor, followed by Zed of Eat, Show No Emotion. Next to finish, Natoire, My Millennium, City Hall, El Morada and Blue Storm. It's a photo. It's but a few strides. Has she arrived in time? It's nearly a dead heat. Four's got it. Number four, Dantela has got it on the outside. Written by Jim Cassidy. And 14 official in the Oakley plate. Fourth was a point. Fifth was Tauke. Sixth was El Mansour. One, two point eight the time. Continuing her wonderful run. Lost the railway on protest over in New Zealand. Came back to Adelaide to score a stunning win over my millennium in record time in the Swetnam stud. Back to group one level. And she scored a last stride victory to give Jim Cassidy the big double. Train There's not a mare in Australasian racing deserves a group one next to her name than this beautiful mare here, Dan Pilar. No doubt about that. Now you're saying you have people watching at home, there's people here, there's people everywhere. Well, why wouldn't they be happy? 481.90, Paint 5.30, Magic Music $4.90. Quinella and Trifectas are there. We'll endeavour to hear from Simon, uh, from... Uh, Ride and yeah. played and it was a beauty yesterday. Oh, it was Bruce. It had it all. It had some uh, some incidents in the race and had one of the most thrilling finishes you could possibly uh, hope for. And uh, you tipped the winner and it was a fair go. Five to seven to two, Dantler. Jim Cassidy, Max, what a run he has in Melbourne. Well, perhaps, uh, Bruce, it's because of the standard of rider down there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think in most, most you... things you'll find that uh, in racing that the standard is a trifle higher in Sydney oh. than it is in Melbourne. <laughs> and Dantler, last hundred metres again, a, a point was big late, wasn't he? Yes, uh, he got uh, held up in the straight, got into some interference, and it was a big run. But look at this grinding finish, and look at the power of Cassidy on uh, Dantelata. Grab paint and finish the trick, most of us. Who you thought of, you thought painted one? Oh, I think we, you know, 90 percent of people on the course. One exception was Jimmy Cassidy. Now his comment was, well, "I'd won for sure." He won against it just as well as Paul, and uh, they could not be happy with the, with the recent form. And after winning the Group One yesterday, well, they're 110 percent going into the new market. And then being as adaptable as she is, she's going to probably start favourite. Some of the disappointments in the race. When the um, Angus Arm and Asco Stakes, Sunlines appear uh, as here. Reappearance in Australia. It's the top rate ahead of Rose of War, Dane Lahr and St. Uh, Clemens Bell. Here is the uh, tote call. It is uh, Dan Lahr, 14, $1.60 for Sunline. St. Clemens Bell is 14, 480 Rose of War. If anything, could she be vulnerable today to, give, to be beaten? Yeah, most definitely. I think um, if she's going to get beat, it'll, it could be today. Uh, if they can't beat her today, I don't know how they're going to beat her. She's only going to improve. So. Eight out of eight so far for Sunline. Can she remain unbeaten? We're about to find out as we take you to Greg Miles for the Angus Armanasco Stakes. Oh, yes. Yes, scratching time. Right. They're off and racing. St. Clemens Bell slow. Haywire missed it three or four. Danelar settles towards the end. Pace Invader first out ahead of Fellowship Rose of War. Sunlines jump well. She's moving up about four wide as they go through the first 300 metres. Pace Invader the leader. Sunlines moved up fast and sits on her out. Bell and neck further back Fellowship. Two links Danelar. Uh, hits taken off around the outside now and they're followed by visual display Citronella and Haywire goes forward as well. Down the side of the course now. 700 metres to go and Pace Invader 
trying to slow the tempo, but Sunline moves up and Aphrodite's off too. Aphrodite three deep at the 600, raced into the lead over Sunline the middle and Pace invaded the rail. Three lengths back, Rose of War and Dane La when they came to the turn and then Haywire at the bend now. Sunline in the middle, Aphrodite the outside, Pace Invader over on the fence corner in front of Rose of War. Larry Cassidy asking now for this champion filly to do something. She's quickened and on the inside, Aphrodite and Sunline. Sunline drew three quarters. Here's the fresh one. Rose of War is after Sunline. It's her moment. Sunline, Rose of War comes at her. Rose of War levels, takes the lead and Rose of War wins at a half length to Sunline. Three lengths to visual displays running on to grab third. Just grabbed it there from St. Clemens Bell. Dane La, Citronella over on the outside and Aphrodite the rail. Clear of Pace Invader, then Haywire and uh, back last of all Fellowship. In uh, being beaten for the first time for today, Sunline, it was still a, a terrific run by the filly. Well, upset, $4 a dollar 40, Sunline a dollar 20, visual displays. For there from I'm going to be self-indulgent for a moment. I reckon Greg Miles, who's a great caller, took another step up yesterday. Boy, is he calling well when he said, you know, it's her moment. It was her moment, wasn't it, Rosa War? Well, it was, and, and you're right, Greg lifted the uh, all patrons at, uh, at Caulfield yesterday. Sunline, gallant in defeat. A shame to see her unbeaten uh, record blemish now, but uh, it's, uh, only a, it's only a small blemish. It's not a stain. She's very good. She is. Now, the two-year-old. Rose of War, Damien Oliver, 3 to 1, 6 to 4 on Sunline, 25 to 1 visual displays. Pete wrong this time and she ran great. First up over 1200, she won against the bias at Flemington 1400 and she's done a good job today. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really looking forward to getting her up to, you know, those sort of 2000 metres and beyond now. And I guess uh, Sunline, if ever, uh, was vulnerable, it was today just second up. You had fitness on it. Yeah, look, uh, she's run a great race. I mean, she's, she's, as you said, she's gone from 1200 to 16 and, you know, first time at Caulfield, first time in Melbourne, I think. So, she's run well. I mean, no doubt she's going to improve into the CUNY next start and she's going to take a lot of beating but um, what about the triple? It was always naturally going to be a little bit short today but uh, you know and saying that the other filly won well too she's going to be hard to beat wherever she goes rose of war but um, we've got a little bit of improvement up our sleeve yet. Second up to Verena Kenworth Lawyer two ahead of 174 Kenworth a Kenny Callender special with Dan Nicolick to ride the market shows that Arena is at 12 Dracula 239 90 spend lawyer 11 530 Mr Innocent 10 Shinkan Shin can see Kenworth at $5.40 there's your market race 3 it's tightened into 440 $3 for Dracula now Arena $9.40 $3 for Dracula $10 Shin can see break quickly out in the center Dracula jumps smartly, but he's going back as Kenworth, the grey muster, speed up on the fence to head them. Spinders out three deep on the track, not far away, Mr. Innocent. Arena showing speed, a length past the 600. Kenworth in front, had the race run to suit. Let a half shin can see, two lengths, Mr. Innocent being niggled at. On the outside spin, then came Arena starting to improve. Dracula three wide, going nowhere at the moment, and Lawyer back to the fence as they turn, and Kenworth straightens for home in front. He got away to lead over a length on shin can see, again coming after him. Two lengths to spin, Dracula letting down the outside with a good run then Mr. Innocent no run arena from Lawyer Kenworth in front Shin Can C's grabbed him here's arena bursting through and he's stable mate Dracula they're after Shin Can C it's Dracula coming after him with arena arena lunging in the shadows of the post and got up I think the winner whisker maybe arena on the line just from Shin Can C and out wide Dracula and Lawyer a great run they were followed by Mr. Innocent spend and Kenworth the early leader last two minor protests at I think uh, Adelaide the winners got there in a nick of time arena He's got the head down right on the line after Shin Can See had raced to the front from the tiring Kenworth. A ride in and may have just clinched victory, but it's a very tight photo finish. As they hit the line, Arena looks to have just done best to win. The win. And what about the run of Lawyer? A great run. Right. Approximates Arena as Corey weighs in. 10.43.60. Shin Can See, a bold performance, wasn't it? 3.90 and Dracula. Arena yesterday won a very very competitive Hobart field I think the three-year-olds this season are similar to the octagonal saintly year with nothing like a Dane and we've got fillies to throw in as well arena versus dignity dancer tomorrow as we go to the Hobart field who, who would you back 
come on no, I would back mile dignity, and a I would back Dignity Dancer tomorrow, but what about Rose Hill Guineas time? These horses are just getting a foundation. Dignity Dancer is there. Look at the pressure that's been put on Dignity Dancer. Now, just note the outside, the yellow colours there, you'll you'll note Lawyer flashing home. Now, what a lovely foundation Lawyer is getting for the, the coming three-year-old events. Dracula, I thought, was unlucky, had to cover too much ground. The race went to the jockey in, in that event, of course, Corey Brown on Arena. That was the difference between uh, victory and defeat, a fine ride. Keith, where's the best three-year-old at the moment? Is it in Melbourne with Dignity Dance or is it in Sydney with one of three? I think that's uh, still on the back burner, but whatever happens, we are in for some exciting staying races with this great crop of three-year-olds. Mm. I mean, we've got these great fillies too because... Well now, you know the old uh, adage, uh, Apollo Stakes, let's have a look at that for you at Warwick Farm and here we go, General Nadim, there's the tote favourite ahead of Kidman's Cove Tide, the not quick flit. One, six, two, and three. Now there's a very big field here at Victoria Park, and they haven't started to move in yet. General Nadim, a dollar ninety, four eighty, tie the knot. Uh, Quick Flit is at twelve dollars. Now they're starting to move up at uh, Victoria Park. Six seventy for Dodge. Um, Corey Brown Anthem's eighteen dollars. Kidman's Cove six ninety. Mr Victory ninety five. In one eighty five seventy, tie the knot. Quick Flit twelve seven twenty. Dodge Anthem's nineteen five seventy. Kidman's Cove. And uh, Mr. Victory, $115. Here we go for the Apollo Stakes of 1999. Terry. Okay. Racing in the Apollo and Mr. Victory, Quick Flick and General Nadim all came out of the gates very quickly and Kidman's Cove has ridden aggressively, but Quick Flick's gained a lead from General Nadim and Kidman's Cove. Either not seven lengths away from the leader, Quick Flick. He's running along the Flickster at the 800 metres mark, led narrowly. General Nadim has moved up and he's putting the acid test to him. He's hit the front now, the General. Two lengths away, Kidman's Cove getting this great run and they're going very hard. They're ten lengths in front of Dodge, Mr. Victory. Then came Ty the Knot going forward, but 15 off the lead and Anthem's last of all. Burner's making Quick Flick work on the General. General Nadim just in front of Quick Flick. Coming to the outside, Kidman's Cove and they're in one race. The others are in another headed by Dodge and tie the knot in the stretch and here's Kidman's Cove on the outside Beasley let him go and Kidman's Cove exploded to the front at the 200 meters mark General Nadim can't match him from quick flick a mile away tie the knot but Kidman's Cove in front racing in the best form of his career and with 100 meters to go he's got the Apollo stakes shot the bets Kidman's Cove goes home and wins by three lengths General Nadim second and tie the knot a rattling third a great run quick flick next from Anthem's not far away Dodge and Mr Victory last home What's the time? They're just outside of the record. They've smashed Naturalism's class record for the race. Race record at 121.9. Volante, the track record holder at 121.3. 121.3 is the overall time. The Volante record, I should say, is 121.06. So they're 0.24 outside the track record. He's joining me. This horse has just improved lengths and lengths. Hasn't he found something? Did he brain them today. I mean, admittedly, he had all favours sitting on the, having the drop on those two leaders, but he couldn't have been any more impressive over the final bit. So, uh, yeah, he's just killing them, isn't he? As you know... Quinella paid $3.70, the trifecta $29.70. Race five at Warwick Farm. There they are. Now... Right me, Pink, that was a run tie. The knot. Kidman's Co, 4-1, to 10-9 to nine on General Nadim, and 13-2 to two tie the knot. Well, they just... Uh, Presented it 18 months ago, he's going to be put down. Simon, what do you think of uh, General Nadeem? Graham, I thought that um, to sum him up, if you're going to sum him up against his best form, he was probably uh, probably two to three to four lengths off it. Uh, it's hard, hard to gauge in that respect. Uh, Jimmy Byrne, I thought, rode him good. He asked him to run. He's got a very fast cruising speed and he asked him to use that yesterday. Um, obviously, he's not 100% the horse in that respect. Kidman's Cove's just flying at the minute. He's just got it right, and he's hit a purple patch, and his enthusiasm, the way he gets to the line, is phenomenal. Uh, Tappy, strike me purple, yellow, black, and brown with tie the knot as well as pink. He was a super run, wasn't he? Oh, was it ever? Mm. And Shane Dye thought so too, as Joe found out. Sprinter General Nadim has hit a snag. The General has run his final race. A mishap at track work has brought at track end. work has brought to an end the career of the exciting galloper. Clary Connors is the general's trainer, and I spoke to him earlier. Just speaking to the owner, Mr. Von Ashdown, he decided to retire the horse, and he'll go home and stand at uh, Glengarry Stud in, New in Queensland.
Trainer John Wheeler has a handy galloper called Bluebird the Worm, who's been placed at Group 2 level in Australia and more recently at Group 1 level at Trenton, then second to surface in the form of a Considering surface had subsequently progressed to win a second Group 1 race, hunters considered the form sufficiently strong to send out Bluebird the Worm favourite for the $100,000 Lion Red New Zealand Stakes of Ellerslie on February 27th. Heading for home now, Montreal star on the outside coming out at the message strongly and took the lead two back to Royce in legal regal battling only 150 to go the message got the lead Montreal star still fighting away legal regal is next but it's the message in front is going to race away he's got them well beaten the message won this line red easily Montreal star held second close third the message is the second group one winner for his sire the former Cambridge stud inmate Golden Ivory subsequently field uh, Simon is of course the St George Stakes and uh, Intergaze at $8.40 is at $10 $11 for Zuccarino $18 for Royal Blue our unicorn at $7.50 Tara Quahira at $6.40 Grand Archway even money on the giddy goat at $2 and my Jasper is showing 31 seven ninety for Tara Kahira Grand Archway into odds on now a dollar eighty and my Jasper at thirty nervous but I mean there's been plenty of money for Grand Archway two dollars into a dollar eighty into gaze there's Estadard began well our unicorn missed it at least three lengths my Jasper out well Grand Archway jumped away nicely is easing back to settle about second or third last Zaccarino and Royal Blue provide the pace working to the lead over Estadard just behind them, my Jasper Tara Kahira. Grand Archway is moving forward on the outside. Caught about four wide, though, about to climb up the hill. Then the intergaze of changes a thousand to go, and Tara Kahira sprinted to the lead now. And leads by two links, Royal Blue Zaccarino. One away to Grand Archway, still out wide, followed by my Jasper Istadad over on the fence. Two links to intergaze and our unicorn. By the 800, Tara Kahira led by a little over a length to Royal Blue Zaccarino the rail. Then Grand Archway, the favourite's having a real tough time. My Jasper, the centre, Istadad lobbing along on the fence but needs a run. And then our Unicorn and Intergaze, a very tightly bunched field, comes up towards the turn. Zuccarino's got up on the inside to tackle Tara Kahira. Grand Archway third's done it hard and she's under pressure. Our Unicorn sweeps around the outside with Intergaze and Istadad gets a rails run. Zuccarino kicked two in front, Istadad through on the inside. Is coming after it with Intergaze coming home and our Unicorn out wide. No Grand Archway. Estadard in the centre has raced to the lead now. Estadard being tackled by Intergaze on the outside. Estadard's a length in front, drawing clear though. And Estadard goes down to win by two lengths to Intergaze second. Our Unicorn third. Next to finish was Zaccarino. A long break, my Jasper and Grand Archway, who's beaten only two to the line. Tara Kahira and a long last Royal Blue. $1.90. And well, Grand Archway, now she was trapped wide all the way. The Puntles will probably give it to Opie Vossen, but even allowing... Greg, he's so honest, so tough, isn't he? $3 and $2 for the place money. Intergaze paid $1.90 for the place, and so too did our unicorn. The qu Grand Archway, 13 to 8 on. You waited half an hour then for her to get in the picture. She was never in it in the, in the straight there. Uh, mm. Des Gleeson did report in the stewards report that she pulled up sore in the near hind leg uh. and Andrew Bensley phoned through this morning to let her... He said, Richard, he didn't do his form, Opie Bossom, and, and I'll tell you the right. reason why, because Shane Dye has touted that Grand Archway is five length better horse when ridden quiet and cool, ridden back, swoop, make one run. Now, yes, now, I've got enormous respect for Opie's ability, but it's very difficult to fly into a, a strange country, a strange track, or maybe on the morning of the race or the day before. You don't know the form, you don't know the horses that you're running against. You don't know what they're going to do. And unless you do an enormous amount of homework, things like that can happen to you. You've got to expect the unexpected. Just uh, $12, Cullen, 11 readouts choice, 24 honour the name, 49 to TAB number 9, Dangerous from Sydney, $16, 81 for Confederate Kid, Son of a Blue Diamond winner, Zedidif. Downing Street at $35, North East Sheila, $9, 11 for Card Queen, Dance Baby Dance, 17 Fleet, 16 and $9.90 for Aviva La Diva. Uh, should pay great attention to his readout's choice. Uh, last week, he only raced for the first time, and as we pick up vision, you watch... Gives him a dig right here, ask him to race forward. He does that. If anything, he gets a little bit keen. He checks right there. Now, he recovers from this quite well. You see him get unbalanced. Jim didn't panic. 
He's getting a nice track into the race. Watch the pointer here. This horse is having his first start. He pushes them out of the way and makes room for himself. He's a bit of a racehorse, isn't he? But today he's got a... He was greatly aided there by the inside alley. He yeah, hasn't I, got that today. He's drawn deep. And I don't think today he can make those sort of blues. There are some seasoned two-year-olds here, some real pros at what they do. Now, he's got to be a superstar to get away with what he got away here at Caulfield last week. There's rumours he's been a touch on the shin sore side. He did a lot of hard work that day. I think he's got to improve a little bit. This is only his second start in a big group. Read out uh, choice. Uh, let's start up with mine first. Let's <laughs> start you in order. I've gone for Tester. Of course, they can, he, he can do a little bit wrong and still win. I think he'll stand up today. Real Jester will be right there with 20 to go. And Mr. Rossa, $293. Real Jester at $10. Cullen at 12, Redoubt's Choice at 10, Honour the Name 20 at 89, Downing Street at 33s, North East Sheila at $9.90, Card Queen $13. Then Let's look at the market movers. Tester Rosser is now into $2.50, a clear cut favourite, real just. Racing. And Testa Rosser began okay. North East Sheila flew out. So did Card Queen Dance Baby Dance. Out quickly to Readout's Choice on the outside, but North East Sheila's going like the wind and has crossed the field off and led clearly by more than two Testa Rosser cut on the inside. Then Readout's Choice, Real Jester, followed by Card Queen Dance Baby Dance over on the inside. Next, Akhenaten. Fleet going through on the inside when they go past the 800 metres and then Sadurka. Honour the name Viva La Diva a long way back with Confederate Kid Dangerous and Downing Street last of all. North East Sheila inside the 600 a half. Testa Ross and niggled at second. A length and a half. Readout's choice. Third outside Cullen. Then Card Queen. Real Jester Akhenaten. Two lengths to Fleet followed by Dance Baby Dance. Honour the name and Sadurka when they corner. North East Sheila first round the turn. Here's Testa Ross laying down the gauntlet of the filly. Cullen on the inside and Readout's choice are starting to run home clear of real jester tester rosser at the 200 drew a length and a half readouts choice is coming home well readouts choice after tester rosser readouts choice has grabbed the lead 50 to go draws away and readouts choice has won the diamond two links tester rosser dangerous flash home grab third perhaps from Real Jester, Downing Street coming home hard in Cullen. Then Dance Baby Dance, Akhenaten, Viva La Diva, North Lee Sheila, Confederate Kid finishing well back with Honour the Name, Fleet, Card Queen and Sadurka. Wowee, what a horse. Only having his second start in a race. Cullen, they're a class of their own, these two. In particular, Readout's Choice. Yep, uh, started from the outside alley. I know that Testa Ross has started from a wide gate. There he is going to lead now, the winner. But uh, got a beautiful run, Testa Ross. Didn't think he was going all that well on the turn, but he found plenty uh, when uh, Eddie Kazar shot into the lead, but he didn't find enough to stall off Readout's choice. The hands... Sydney, but you already won one of these. How, I mean, Danny, it's got to be a great field to come back home and do this. Mate, it means a lot more to me. Last one I won was a half a million. This one's a million. Yeah, exactly. Danny, he's, he's never going to get beat. Yeah. I jogged up behind Testa Rossa, and he half switched off. Right. He's a really good horsey source, and, and I want to hold the ride on him, because in the slip, I reckon he raced about midfield, maybe even touch better. Yeah. He just turns off and finds gears. Danny, lovely to have the back in Melbourne, mate. Start. They're back in Melbourne, mate. Start, but quite apart from that, this is a, an extraordinarily good horse. Blazing favourite now for the slipper, would you think? Well, uh, yeah, I would think. But uh, his shins are going to fire up again. Greatly surprised if he's not Golden Slipper favourite. But he was at good odds today at his second race start. He paid 11 40 and 3 80 on Super Tab. $1.50 for Testa Rossa. $4.20 for... Back to his best, along came Reduce Choice. Uh, Rick Hallace, said, I've been shouting from the rooftops that this is the best horse I've ever had. Now you'll listen. Danny Nicolek said, I'll go anywhere to ride him. Incidentally, he gave away six or seven rides. Certainly, he's, that was the best two-year-old performance I've seen so far this season. Season. He's a worthy favourite for the Golden Slipper. I'd pay the hundred thousand dollars, but I just, just how, how uh, is he holding on this horse? He's shin sore during the week. Will that thread break? That's broken so many with so many two-year-olds so far this season. Will he get? And Redoubt's Choice at eight to one, two to one favourite Testa Rossa, and twelve to one the fast finishing Dangerous. The others were a mile back. And uh, one thing's for sure, boys. Anything that finished back behind him yesterday won't be turning the tables on him. Uh, well, de that depends on what distance you run them at, I guess. I don't think. I think you're right at uh, 1,200 metres. Beyond yeah. that, it's uh, there's actually uh, only half length, I think, between about five or six horses for third place. So there's probably a few of them in there that can uh, can make the jump up to uh, 
you know, at a, at a longer trip because they were starting to get home strongly. But I'm not taking anything away from the winner. It was outstanding effort and, and same from the second horse. They were, way, they were too good for them yesterday. Richard, that, in that race. Can't see it in the screen at this stage, but I saw a horse in the white just on the outside there. The white with yeah. the green cap and, white and green yeah. stripes. Little horse in your stable there. He was back out last, got held up at the top of the yeah. straight and then just photo out of third. Yeah, it was a very good run. And he's probably one of a number that uh, that came home well in the race to, um, you know, to just get photoed out of third. And, and maybe the longer straight and the uh, 1,400 metres of, of the size will... Uh, that's Downing Street that, uh, that Simon's talking about. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there are quite a number of those that might be able to get a closer anyway in the, in the size. I think it'll be a more competitive race at that, uh, at that distance. Very much. A good horse to good is the winner of Doubt's Choice. Well, I've said that I think he's the best horse I've ever trained. And, um, I mean, that horse is, is shinsaw and he's still able to do what he did today. I mean, uh, you know, that's a remarkable, remarkable performance and, and he, he can only improve. And he's so relaxed, that's the thing. When he walking around the yard there, you'd swear he was a 10-year-old and he'd been doing it for years and years. Just you heard what he said. You'd swear he was a 10-year-old and he'd been doing it for years and years. Just you heard what he said. This is the best horse I've ever trained. He did have Canny Lad. He did have Spartacus. Mm. He did have Theatre. That is a very big call. And he's probably going to be a mild horse. Um, and he's a very good horse. He's the best I've ridden by far. That's a big rap, Danny. Yeah, I've ridden some good horses. You've won the Blue Diamond before, haven't you? Yeah, I went on paint and I won by four lengths. Um, but I'm telling you, he's a better horse than paint. He's got a lot more scope. Like paint could only have one way of racing, and that was jumping around. Went forward, travelled like he usually does. He did nothing wrong in the run. He felt 100%. He just met up with a good horse, a very, very good horse. Um, anything that I thought could take me like that in the straight would have to be a very, very good horse, and I'm sure these two will clash again, and it'll be another exciting race. He gave you a good the dividends. El Mansour, $14. Bazil Bay, $1.80. Uh, Rustic Dream, $17. Umrum, $8.40. Five eighty for Buster Jones, $10. For Top weight at $13. Bazil Bay, the one everyone wants, is $1.70. Rustic Dream at $20. Umrum, sweated up in the yard quite profusely, actually, $10. Buster Jones, some support at five eighty. Helm, $11. <laughs> And a lovely start. Soon after it, Umrah might have dipped. He dropped out towards the tail. El Mansour first out from Speedy Kids and Bazil Bay dropped in third, a length away. Two lengths to Rustic Dream. At the 800, El Mansour neck in front of Helm, a length and a half to Speedy Kids and a half away on the outside, Bazil Bay. Buster Jones follows the favourite. Umrah on the fence and a length and a half. Rustic Dream last of the seven. Six lengths covered them. At the 600, El Mansour three quarters to Helm. One away, City Kids on the inside. Half Bazil Bay, Cassidy he hasn't asked a question of the favourite yet. Buster Jones a length and a half away with the baldy face and then Umrum and Rustic Dream. Al Mansour led around the home turn from Helm. Bazil Bay a length and a half away. Now asked to go and then Speedy Kids when they corner. Al Mansour hasn't been let go. He leads a length and a half to Helm. Ducking in behind him. Two lengths Bazil Bay. Gee, he's going to need to get a wriggle on. Al Mansour with a nice lead at the 150. Bazil Bay's gone. Here's Rustic Dream. It's Al Mansour in front. Helm the inside and Rustic Dream. Al Mansour, Rustic Dream lunge. Not much in this between El Mansour, Rustic Dream, Helm on the rails in third place, clear of Bazil Bay, who couldn't go on from Speedy Kids Amram. And uh, back last of all is Buster Jones. Oh, the bookies are protected again. That's three hot pots to go, to, four hot pots to go down at Caulfield today. Plus, got a feeling El Mansour just held on from Rustic Dream. And we're waiting for the number. There it is now. Number three's got there, Rustic Dream. I was wrong. You heard Mick Price uh, sound reasonably confident earlier. I thought he was kidding, but it was I was the one who was kidding. And that close-up shows that Rustic Dream just put his nose out when it counted. And Rustic Dream is far right of... I tell you what, Kenny, not a bad consolation whatsoever, Pete. Your first group one, mate. Your first group one. Mate, it's the best feeling I've ever felt in my whole life. You just got up by the last stride. It was a photo finish, mate. Uh, your thoughts just as you hit the line? I wasn't sure Danny's horse sort of run out a bit at the 150 and I, was, I thought if I got beat off four in a protest anyway. Yeah. What do you got the black armband on? Is that for you or for the rest of the putters of Australia? It's an acknowledgement of the carnage at Caulfield, <laughs> Bruce. Four odds on favourites. It started with skates and it went to sky heights at 13 to 8 on. Uh, 2 to 1 on. Grand Archway at 13 to 8 on. And then Brazil Bay, Mr Place at 7 to 4 on. Could you and Peter Mertens broke his back 10 years ago and he came through and won his first group one. At the age of 37, mm. first group one success also for trainer Mick Price and the last ride win from an underestimated horse, I think, I, to Andy Galloper. I agree. I reckon he's all right. Um, 
some rustic dream home at 15 to 1. Al Mansour running his best race in ages, uh, 12 to 1. Helm, what a big baby he is. Uh, if he's not a good horse in the making, Helm, I've never seen one. 16 to 1. Brazil Bay, inexplicable. 7 to 4 on. An explanation for it in that the horse apparently pulled up sore after the race. Oh, did he? Yeah. Uh, so that may Race 5, computer ratings on the Chipping Norton Stakes, Pelaya. Rating 100, and yet she shows 6.30 on the wind tote. Tie the knot, rates are 97, and is... Ken likes tie the knot. He's flying. $1.60, tie the knot. $3.90, tie the knot. Second pick, Palaya, 3.80. Here's Terry Bailey. And the Faith Emancipation in 1980. Metres to go on the Chipping Norton Stakes. He extends his lead. He led by two and a half on Palaya. Two lengths away. Tie the knot. He's getting up on the inside. A great ride by Dai. He's gone from last to third and moving around them. Dodge and last of all, Darazari coming towards the bend. The leader is Forgotten Hero. Tie the knot is still persevering for this inside run. Palaya three out. Dodge four out. Darazari last but only three off them. Around the bend. Palaya's moved up to Forgotten Hero but Tie the knot's got this great run the fence dodge to the outside darazari the deepest but die said go and tie the knot in a matter of three strides shot away at the 200 he raced two lengths to forgotten hero running the race of his life then darazari dodge and palaya but tie the knot confirms his sydney cup favoritism tie the knot charges away and wins by five lengths forgotten hero second palaya may be third from darazari but there's nothing in it and dodge was last of the five well they all want to get off the fence today and Di has gone from last right up on the rail to win this race for the third time in a row. He's great right... ...meters in the Melbourne Cup in under 47 seconds. It was quite amazing. Oh, he's a hell of a horse. Tie the knot, 180 and 120. Forgotten hero, 610. No third toad, Darazari. Quinella, 2120. And the trifecta, 141.30. He's a very, very good horse. What about Ty the Knot? I've been singing his praises for weeks with you two blokes, haven't I? Oh, no, you've done the opposite. This is a very good horse. He comes from last. That's uh, Ty the Knot in the red. This was the parting of the season. Yes, this the opposition was not strong. Max, but wasn't the winner thought. Well, he put, put it this way, Keith. He could have pulled an anchor and beaten that opposition, but the rival jockeys made it easier. Shane Dye refused to scout the rails early. The chief steward, Ray Murray, he got him into the room before this race and said, look, what's wrong with the rail? Like Dye scouted the rails, look at the result, but what about the other jockeys? They just drifted off the fence. Surely uh, the Chief Steward was entitled to speak to them too and say, well, why why get off the fence? Max, if, um, if, he, if he came to Melbourne, tied the knot, he would run odds on in the Australian Cup. I believe Connections want to keep him for the Ranvit and uh, the other big one in Sydney. Why yeah. wouldn't he come to Flemington? Well, I think they're trying to. They think he's a good thing in the other races too, but certainly if he was mine, greed uh, would overcome uh, kind judgment and I'd send him to Melbourne because I think it'd be little more than an exhibition gallop the Australian so Cup. So do I. 1.2 million the Australian Cup, 400. He just looks unbe unbeatable in the Rand Vet and the Mercedes, doesn't he? He does. The spring, he's pretty awesome. Richard? Uh, oh, he's a good horse. I mean, I, I've got a lot of respect for Tyler Knott and I think he'll win his good races. He beat, uh, he beat a 66 to 1 shot oh, Forgotten yeah. Hero and uh, four others that you wouldn't actually class as top liners, would you? What about his authority, Richard? I would win with authority, but you know, I'm not being... I'd I'm, love to see I'm this horse one in a one-horse race the way he races. He's yeah, got a magnificent turn. I know. I want to brush this question by you, please. Yeah. He reminds me a little bit of a superimposed type of horse. I know he's not there yet, but... Uh, but I think it's, it's a, it goes throughout racing. Everyone goes over the top about one performance, and then the next week they come out and, and get beaten under different conditions because it's so competitive, and everyone goes, oh, what a disgraceful... Um, but Richard, you know, all his runs this time in have been absolutely outstanding. I know the horse is hey, going very, very well, Richard. but in a different race with a different feel and Richard. a different conditions, you get a different result. Where were you last <laughs> Melbourne Cup day? Uh, uh, Siberia. Yeah, he ran well there, but there are probably a few hard luck stories in that, mate, uh, in that race broke, as well. He broke 14 <laughs> along here, mate. We'll move, we'll move on. Everyone's too, big to, too quick to put the wrap on them and then too quick to call them a flop in racing. So you yeah. wouldn't mind having him in? No, uh, I think he should go on and win another couple of group ones this preparation. And I thought I heard... ...rating 100. Ruby Toff is rating 95. Both daughters of that uh, great horse, Rubiton. Zeno on the event, Rubicall, 370. Savannah Success, $4.24 Crimson Flight. 11 Confer, 10 Ruby 5. 14 Zaza Bell, 18 Dancing Jester. 31.5. Um, and they're just about under starters' orders now. The line looks 
almost intact as we take it to Terry Bailey. Terrific all sectional times by Ty the Knot. 30 in the centre jump well, but she's got no speed. Annunciation away quickly and Wild Lindy out wide. Savannah success away quickly and try goal going smartly. Not far away is Ruby Top on settling from pre nuptial and moving up while any three wide. Crimson flight the fence. In between runners, Ruby Top. Try goal. Blue cap is posted very wide. Life's a rainbow the centre. Savannah success is starting to improve, but it's very wide. Ruby call on the fence. Then came nothing to declare who's jammed away between runners. pre nuptials well back in the field with Dancing Jester. Then came Wichita. Zaza Bell confers a teller. And Zeno Bell whipped them in. They're nice and compact on the bend. 400 out. Crimson flight the inside. Wiley three wide in between them Zub Ruby top Ruby call back to the fence getting this great run and Savannah success down the outside it's crimson flight in front Ruby calls got the inside run which are starting to explode through in the center Ruby call taken to the front Savannah success is lengthening out magnificently well on the outside the New Zealand Oaks winner Savannah success pounced on the front from Ruby call and Savannah success wins Ruby call second confer third which are next they were followed by Zatella prenuptial dancing jester then Zazabel not too too far away would have been Crimson Flight, Ruby Top, Annunciation, Wild Lenny, Lifestyle Rainbow, Zeno Bell, nothing to declare, try goal last. Yes. She sat deep, which most horses haven't been able to do today, and she has finished very powerfully. 4 6 day of the fillies we've seen so far this season in Sydney. I think that's the one, Savannah Success, who really does show tremendous potential. And uh, coming back from the 2400 of the New Zealand Oaks, uh, They've got to be pretty classy to achieve it. Janet Success, the three-year-old filly that won the New Zealand Oaks, yet another top three-year-old filly coming out of New Zealand. Just how good do you think she might be, Max? Well, the strength of Savannah Success is the fact that she was coming back from 2,400 metres to the 1,400 metres yesterday, and uh, certainly she was better uh, than any of her rivals yesterday. While the field was handy, I don't think there was all that much depth in it, and she was just too good. But uh, I think that one of the star attractions of this race was the track. It had been heavy uh, 10 hours earlier. Uh, it was most uniform. We saw Ty the Knot come up along, so, along the fence. You see Savannah success there out off the fence and being much too good. I'm not getting a wind up here, I'm being choked. Wig. Uh, Richard and Simon, they've got to be pretty special to mix their distances as effectively as she can. Ah, yes, a, a good filly. Um, we had a filly there, Wichita, just ran fourth. She's probably, you know, competitive here in Melbourne without being uh, anything, uh, you know, without putting her in the top two or three here. So that form probably lines up okay, but I still think the Melbourne fillies are stronger. Nice Savannah Success though has won her last. Savannah sick. Success though has won her last five now, Richard, um, oh, including the New Zealand Oaks last start. She looks every bit the one to beat in the AJC Oaks. Yes, yeah, she uh, she certainly raced.